Hey, Melody, can you hear me? <clears throat> can you hear me okay? <clears throat> I got to get my voice going. <laughs> <clears throat> Got to get the voice going here. So, yeah, I'm going to do some painting. I'm going to use acrylic and watercolor, but I'm going to paint uh, in Serene. It's been a while. Hi, Pacola, Karen. Happy Monday, everybody. Hi, Jersey. How's it going? Hope everybody's having a good Monday. <laughs> thanks everybody for popping in did i tweet no wait i didn't tweet let me tweet <laughs> i always forget i don't even have tweet so i think i don't think i did let's see nope i didn't all right let's see coffee and art in the morning, whoops, let's make a space between that. In the morning, live. Let's see, where's my coffee? Painting in serene. Oh, let's spell serene right. Link in profile. Let's see. Let me reread it. Okay. All right. There we go. Hi, Julie Topaz. Janice. Sorry, I was tweeting. Mama Four. Karen. Muffy. Uh, Mary. Nick and Tina. Hi, guys. Hi. If Sammy was here, I'd go, hi, y'all. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so yeah <clears throat> Scythia Scythia welcome Galena Purpolina Terry Trouble oh there's our Terry welcome back Terry Terry has got new puppy new puppy training so she's that in her uh, shoulder she had to she wasn't here most of last week He's here today, but don't overdo it. Do not overdo it, Miss Terry Trouble. <laughs> don't overdo. Yeah, see, can't stay long. Okay. I know I saw this picture. I don't know if I can find it right off. Let's see. She posted a picture of her dogs and, oh, my gosh, the toys. The toys. I thought my cats were spoiled, Terry. But I know you're trying to keep them from uh, from chewing on things. So you, uh, let's see, let me, let me, no, no, cancel that search. Let me look for Terry here. Terry, there we go. <laughs> oh, my, oh, there she is. Hiya. <laughs> I was trying to find a picture of Terry's little puppy here. Let's see. I'm sure it's, there it is. This is the picture. Oh, well, first, let me show you the cuteness. Okay, so here's the cuteness. There's the cuteness, Yogi. But look, here's uh, here's the whole family here. L look at this. Look at this hot mess. <laughs> Which one is that one? It's buried in the toys. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> that is so cute that is so cute yeah toys better than fingers yeah <laughs> hi karen dave uh elizabeth spooky house of books <laughs> cute what a cute name um kim uh riri robin Teresa. thank you for the card Teresa. uh pamela I'm sure I'm missing people. Thanks everybody for being here. So we have, I have a few things to show. I did have, got, did buy a couple things. Got a couple books. Hubster got another one of his books in for his birthday. Um, so yeah, 
Lisa. Hey, Jen. Jen Oz down under. Oh, I'm sure it's almost bedtime for you down under, but welcome. It's been so long since I've seen you. If y'all don't remember Jen Oz, um, Oz Grand, she's in uh, Australia. She's She visited, was it, was it been about, is it over a year ago? Maybe two now. How long ago was it when you visited the States, you and Squiz, Jen? Okay, well, stay. Well, I'm glad you're here for as long as you can be here, guys. I know people have appointments and things to do. Thanks for stopping in. Hi, Natalie. Other Kimberly. Uh, anybody else I missed? It's 1030 there. Yes, y'all are 14 hours ahead of us. Yeah, so she did visit all of us through the States two years ago. I can't, I can't believe it. Can you believe it's been two years? Yeah, because last year, um, Janet and uh, Xandra and everybody visited y'all. So, yeah. So, I know I'm missing people. No, I'm missing a Vicky. Which Vicky am I missing? I see everybody saying hi, but I don't see who it was. Arlene. Let's see. Who else? Seems like yesterday. It does. It does. Are y'all planning on making another trip to the States, Jen? Hi, Barbara. Other Kim, got three Kims. Kim K, Kim L, and Kimberly 557. Welcome all the Kims. <laughs> oh. oh, there's Coloring with Vicky. Hi, Coloring with Vicky. Michelle. So, yeah, happy Monday, everybody. I'm good, Dave. How are you? Thanks, everybody, for the thumbs up already. Appreciate it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I pulled out my Arteza uh, watercolors and I'm going to use some acrylic paint and we're going to paint in serene. I'll show you the pictures that I have. I keep them in here because they're oversized so they don't fit in a notebook. So uh, I'll show you the ones I have done and am, and working on. Hi G. G's been busy over on her channel too. And Xandra, I didn't even know she streamed yesterday. She, I didn't get any notification. I saw somebody say, oh, I liked your stream, Xandra. I went, well, I didn't even get a notification yesterday. So I uh, I scrubbed through it this morning and watched Xandra's uh, from last yesterday afternoon. I think she says she streams now at four. So if y'all want to catch Xandra, um, hi, Queen Sassy Deb. Um, hi, Kia. But yeah, uh, no, you can't vacuum, Natalie. It'll, it'll, uh, it's too loud. Well, we can't have you vacuuming during the show. We'll hear it. No. <laughs> <laughs> hi Karen uh let's see did I say hi to you Melody I think I think I did when you first came in I hope you're doing okay too yes I saw that Jane came to her stream yes she's she comes I don't want to say quite often but Jane comes to Xandra's stream occasionally and um well hi Melody and um and Xander got to go to her workshop in Australia. So Xander actually went to her studio, to Jane Davenport's studio. I do have something here for Xander today, too. And I didn't even know she streamed yesterday, but I do have something for her. So, um, yeah. I got a couple books, and then uh, let's see. So we're going to color. We're going to paint this. We're going to start with watercolor. And, uh, well, I'm going to do acrylic paint background. And then I have my Arteza watercolor uh, pencils here. Let's just flip through them here. So, um, yeah, I got my Arteza watercolor pencils I thought we'd play with. Acrylic paint background, watercolor base. And so, yeah, so we're going to, uh, we're going to paint in Serene today. Hi, Nancy. 
Pamela, let's see, nice pull your legs early in the morning. It's not <laughs> just pull one. Don't pull them both, Melody. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. But if y'all are here for new or for the first time, I always come on about 830 to say good morning. And I stream every Monday and Wednesday. And I come on about 830 to just to say hi. And uh, <laughs> Sammy, this is Sammy's. We, this is both of ours. I think this is Sammy's and it is my favorite all time color book. If I had to pick one, now, trust me, I can pick lots that I love. But I think if I only could have one color book, it would be Serene. I have two copies. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it would only be, it would be Serene if I had to pick one. I think Sammy's the same way. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what, where was, oh yeah. So I stream every Monday and Wednesday at eight thirty. well, nine officially, but I come on at eight 30 to say hi and chat a little bit. So if you're watching the recording, just scrub on through if you don't like the chat, but it is a chat show. Let's just make that clear from this get go. It's a chat show. Hi, Suze. How you doing? Queen Sassy. Uh, who else? So, yeah, but if you want to just see the projects, just, you know, just, just slide that little bar to the parts that you want to see. I have to do it on some streams too. When I, you know, I don't, nobody has time to watch every stream. You know, we have so many streamers and so, you know, watch what you can scrub through, you know, do your best. That's all, that's all we can do. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So anyway, better every day. Good, Suze. That's good to hear. Enabling we go. Yes. Enabling we go, Riri. <laughs> so um okay, Robin. Thanks for just lurk away. Anybody? I lurk too sometimes. Uh I usually have somebody stream on when I'm working. Um, you know, in the background. Sometimes I lurk. Hi, Becky. Uh, sometimes I'm talking there and sometimes I'm just watching, you know, um, you, cause you know, when you, you don't want to be rude to people, you know, they're talking to you and you don't want to be rude, but you're working too. So yeah, Karen, let's see. Hi, Janet. Who else am I missing? So, um, if, I've had that book for several weeks to color it, trying to pick a page. Yeah. Well, I'm going to show you some of the pages I've done, uh, Cynthia. Yeah. Hi, Wolfie. Hi, May. I know I'm going to be missing people. Chat rolls by. Thanks for the thumbs up so early. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. So, yeah. If y'all don't know, Janet streams right after me at one. Well, there's usually a little bit of a break between us, but she streams after me. Um, I'm sure some of you other girls that are color book girls, Janet's not a color book girl. So, um, yeah, she's not, she doesn't really pay attention. Well, I don't want to say she doesn't pay attention. She's nice to everybody <laughs> uh, most of the time. Well, except for Eileen. <laughs> But uh, so, yeah, if you know, if you girls are color book girls and you, you know, you stream today, let, you know, let the color book people know that's OK. I mean, we're going to, you know, it's going to happen, people. <laughs> we're going to be double streaming sometimes. Oh, Courtney's streaming with you today. Do you know what you're going to be doing yet, Janet? <clears throat> That'll be fun. Looking forward to it. I know, isn't Terry's puppy so cute, Janice? So, yeah, I don't know what, uh, I don't know what Janet's going to be streaming today. <clears throat> so, she's a handful. Yeah, puppies are. Yeah, puppies are. Hi, Betty. Carving stamps. Oh, yay. Now you're going to get me wanting to pull my stuff out and carve along with you, Janet. Don't don't make me do that. I got too much other stuff to do. But carving stamps is fun. It is fun. I look forward to that. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, Janice. 
I know I'm missing people. Did I say how to bad it? Yes, how to bad it. Do it, Jan said. Do it. I have carved a few. You've seen them. I've shown them. I'm, I've carved on the show before. It's been a while. But um, yeah. Hi, Cheryl. So let me show you. Uh, well, like I said, to um, and and don't forget, guys, put it in caps if you're talking to me because uh, right now I'm just sitting here reading chat. But when I'm working, uh, if you don't put it in caps, I'm more than likely to miss it. Hi, Elaine. Uh, so put it in caps if you're talking to me. Don't speak in caps if you're not speaking to me because then I get confused and think you're speaking to me. Um, also, a couple other things. Make sure at the top of the chat. Even if you're watching the recording, make sure you check live chat. If you just have it set at top chat, you're not going to see all the chat. And people sometimes think we're missing them. Hi, Wendy. Uh, yeah, well, it's not brand new. This one, Suze, the watercolor. Yeah, that's my Arteza. I just put it in a tray. Um, if you don't have it on live chat, people are going to think, I mean, you're going to think that people are ignoring you when we just don't see you. Uh, if you don't have it on live chat. So the other thing too is make sure that your little wheel, your little setting gear under the video, make sure it's set at least to 720 or 1080p so that you're watching in HD. If you start getting um, lag or uh, buffering, make sure that right next to under the video where it says live, there's a little red dot. If it's not red, that means you're not caught up. So click the little red dot and that'll catch you up. Okay, that'll catch you up in the stream. So there's some things that uh, just for any streamer. Hey, Scoobs. I missed you last time, Scoobs. I saw I, I scrubbed through the chat uh, stream or stream before. And I said, oh, I miss, I miss Scoobs. Hi, Christine. So yeah, hi, Scoobs. Hi, Pacola. Did I say good morning to you, Pacola? So good morning. And uh, yeah, awesome mods. Okay. I have the best mods. No offense to any other mods. <laughs> no offense to other mods, but yeah. Um, th these mods are the best. So, okay. So let me go ahead now. I'm going to be looking away. I mean, just so put it in caps if you're talking to me. And uh, we're going to try to get crack a lacking or, um, yeah. <laughs> so I have colored a lot, uh, quite a bit in Serene, and uh, I'll show you the pages that I've finished. Let's go ahead and zoom in one here. Uh, let's see here. That looks pretty good. So this is what we're going to do today, but I'm going to show you a few of the ones that I I have finished in no particular order. They're just stuck in the book. I've torn them out. And uh, some are finished, some are not. So I will tell you. Let's zoom in a little more, I think. Let's just make sure we are focused. Let's autofocus again. And let's brighten it up just a tad. Got to do all these settings. Um, and I'll show you the ones that I finished and, uh, and working on. So let's pull them all out. There's a, there's a lot in this book. There's a lot of pictures in Serene. So this is one, and I can't tell you even when we've done them, but uh, yeah, uh, I'll show you the, the ones that we have finished and are working on. So this one has some stickles on the background there. And uh, so there's this one. I have a couple other things to show you too. I'm just going, oh, thank you, Riri, for the super chat. Thank you so much. Email me now. Anybody that super chats me or PayPals me, just to just so I have a, you know, I can write it down and have a record. Email me your address, even if you know I already have it, just so I can uh, keep up monthly with who's sending me stuff that I can send a little art back to you. Hi, Sheree. Uh, uh, oh, that, um, Shara, Shara, uh, that is iffy. Aren't you? Yeah, it's iffy. I, I never remember that iffy, but today I, well, I see iffy next to you. So iffy, it, I, it's been so long since you've been able to be a regular. 
Oh, thanks, Suze. This is not my regular wedding band. Um, <laughs> actually, one of these days I'll get it resized. My wedding band and my uh, engagement diamond, they, uh, the, you know, after 40 <clears throat> years, you know, my fingers are a little fatter than they were <laughs> back then. So I need to get them resized. This is just another ring that I uh, I really like. It's uh, It has Hebrew, where you go, I will follow is what it says. But I, I do have a, a real ring, <laughs> but I just have to get them resized. So uh, hi, Shauna. And uh, so anyway, it's good to see you, Iffy. It's good to see you. So this one is done. I don't like the flowers. They're all to the same. But uh, I could put like some layer, you know, layer some paint over it and make them a little bit more uh, not so uniform. But I really like her face and her hair. I like everything, but the flowers are too the same. So there's that one. This one's in progress. I think I started this one a couple of Christmases ago and haven't finished it. But I work on them a little here and there. So, um, yeah, this one. Hi, Jeanette. Jeanette. <laughs> uh, I always want to add accents. <laughs> so anyway, she's in progress and she was going to be our little Christmas elf. And, uh, you know, she's coming along. But uh, yeah, there's that one. This one's not done either. <laughs> this is one of the first ones that I did in the book, too. This is done here. But this is not shaded in here. So she's been painted, base painted. And when I say base painted, like, well, not always anymore. I'm using watercolor and other things, too. But it's acrylic, watered-down acrylic paint. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Sammy. Watered-down acrylic paint. And uh, so this part is done, the stone angel there. And I got the sky. The background is painted with black acrylic paint. And so you can see how far I got. But this is how I started it. It's just a wash, a wash of acrylic paint and uh, then go in and shade with pencil. And the reason that you want acrylic, uh, you want a matte acrylic paint, uh, I like Americana. You can get whatever kind of craft paint you want. But if you get artist grade acrylic paint or, you know, just you, you just you just know, you have to test, but you don't want one that's shiny. Oh, thank you, Chantel. Thank you. Email me your address, Chantel. And, and again, I don't know. Uh, let me put my email in there. Um, I have a few people that I still have um, some water little watercolors I'm sending out. So don't don't fret if you if, I, if I'm a couple weeks behind. <laughs> um, but anyway, I like the Americana Deco Art because it is not shiny. Some artist grade, like if you got golden or some real expensive paints, or even just some off brands, you just have to test them. If they have a sheen, if they're satin or gloss, your pencil will not go on it. Your pencil will not uh, blend on top. You have to have a matte uh, acrylic paint. Matte. Has to be matte. Okay. And uh, so there's that one. This is one of my favorites. I really love her. And she's got the gold in there is gold paint. So gold paint on top of probably green and gold or yellow and green uh, shading with some gold on top. So you can see the shimmer in the gold. So I really, really like her. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the thumbs up. Hi, Judy. Thank you, Terry. Thanks, guys. So thanks for all the thumbs up and thanks for being here on Monday. So I really like all the details. And another thing that I, if people always say, well, I don't know what colors to pick or what, uh, if you pick a few, like pick maybe three main colors and a couple of accent colors, if you keep it about five colors, then you, and, and spread them out. See how the orange is all around. See, and then there's green, green, and green. If you spread them out like that, it'll make your page look cohesive. So, and again, I always say sometimes you got a, a gazillion flowers or something. You want all different colors of flowers. Well, you know, you could do that too. But if you want it, your page to look consistent, um, 
and cohesive than if you just pick, you know, three to five main colors. Oh, good. Yeah, good, Cynthia. And uh, then, then your page is going to just have a flow about it. Okay, this one is done. And again, if you see, there's just gray, red, and orange. You know, a blue, gray, a cool gray, some uh, red, and her hair is, you know, orangey with some little red in there. Then um, what brand is that water color? Hang on, red, Tin Roof. Oh, it's Tin Roof. Oh, that, uh, uh, that sounds familiar. I, I think, do you stream or remember? Sounds familiar. Uh, right now we're going to be using, this is Arteza watercolor. This is Arteza. They're the tube ones. I squeezed them out. I, I bought the little um, pans here. Squeeze them out and let them dry. Of course, I reconstitute them with a spritz bottle. And I, they're just in a pencil tin. Um, I just I, And they're double taped down. So you take this off. There's double stick tape under there. And so they just stick in there. I just made my own little palette. Um, okay, Jen, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you, Jen, down under. Well, don't be a stranger. I hope you're going to be streaming again soon. Um, yeah, she does kind of look like Scully from the X-Files. Yeah, she kind of does, doesn't she? So put some freckles on her. And anyway, so yeah. So these colors, is it always good to have at least two contrasting? Uh, well, no, that's not necessarily. I mean, this one is just all one color. This is oh, a black, white, and the blue. So, you know, but what I'm saying is, is if you want your page to look cohesive and kind of pull together. See, like this one has the gold green, the blue, and the pink. And I'm not done with this one yet. As you can see, I'm not finished with this one. But you can see some of the shimmery gold in there. But, uh, okay. Oh, my gosh, Jen. Get back to that that uh, room, girl, your craft room. Get back there. <laughs> Hi, Mark. And you'll see, I know I'm missing people. Thanks, everybody. I'm not trying to miss you. So if I do look away and it scrolls by. Um, so, yeah, this one. And then this one, she's got a little bit more work to do, but uh, on her, but she's she's you know, this was a lot of work in the background. It was all those bubbles. This one was quite a bit of work with the background. Bye, Jen. Thanks, Dave. Okay, this one. Oh, uh, I have the flowers in her hair in her um headdress to finish but other than that she's done i really like the way her eyes turned out so um yeah you see this one is all blue golden and red i mean you could do what you want guys just for me i like it to i like to have a consistency through the whole thing it just kind of ties it all together so i really like her this one's in progress. This is my golden goddess, and she is all shimmery with, uh, I think this is uh, Wink of Stella on her. It's not glitter. It's Wink of Stella. And, of course, I still have her headdress to do, and she's very golden-looking colors. So she's in progress. This one, I think we did, we started this one, well, it's been some months now. So, um, yeah, we'll get, th we'll get them done. <laughs> and then these are a couple that I'm just I kind of pulled out because I might want to work on these. But those I'm not going to go through the whole book. There are videos out there going through the whole book. And I don't have all the pages. I gave Cameron a couple out, out of here. And uh, so I think but that's all the ones I've worked on. So this is the one we're going to work on today. Uh, I don't I don't know yet, Pacola. I don't know what colors I'm gonna do on the Golden Girl. Probably. Probably just more, a lot of this uh, purple color. It'll probably have a lot of that purple color in there. But I don't know. That was that one's kind of old. Okay, so um, let me put these in the book here. Let me show you a couple things. So 
in my uh, Jane in my Jane uh, book. I, I'm just calling it that because what I did is I deconstructed a Jane Davenport. Where is it? I kept the cover, so I could. Where did I put it, though? I kept the cover to show you guys because I know people ask. Uh, here it is. So this book right here, <clears throat> Whimsical Girls Happy Hour Art Journal, J. Davenport. I took it all apart, so I cut all the pages out, and then I reconstructed, uh, reconstructed. Hi, Anne. Uh, let's see, Anastasia, Anne L. I'm sure I'm missing people. Wendy, let me get a sip of juice here. And um, I did paint the edges. I painted some black, teal, and gold on the edges there. So I reconstructed the journal and, um, and washi taped in the whole book. So I'd washi tape it. And now this right here is where I did Smack and Dragon. And I did show that last week where I spritz ink on a non-porous surface, turn the book over and smack and dragon it through the paint so this has been painted on um but i washi taped all the pages skipped a couple pages another smack and dragon uh and then washi taped in all the pages okay i gotta close this one to my end. <clears throat> so took the whole book apart and there's a video where uh we did most of it I didn't show, I didn't stay and uh, washi tape in every single page for you guys. That would have been kind of boring. More smack and dragon taped in page. So, um, and then what I've also done in here, here's another smack and dragon. Uh, and then, and I just, you know, put them all in again. Another smack and dragon. I'm going to do more smack and dragon but you can see some. And then I uh, put some of the stickers that were in the book, some of the collage papers. And um, so I'm gonna, it's just a journal to play in, to sketch in, and also to keep my swatches in. So uh, here's some Posca. Here's my artisan paint pens, Pos Posca metallic, more of the artisan. Um, these are the ones I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby. Uh, let's see what else here. Another Smack and Dragon. Another Jane Page, just um, washi taped in. And I used all different kinds of washi tape. This one's a little butterfly. Uh, and then here's the mermaid markers. And then I just hand wrote the names of them with some uh, brush pen type things or some touch, the touch pins. Oh, thank you, Terry. Hi, Bonnie. And um, so again, these are uh, the mermaid markers. Mermaid markers. And then here are the Jane Davenport watercolor sets that I have. I have all three of her sets. And so these are the different, like this one is the, they're, they're not really named. They're just like the color of the sets. Like this one's gold. So these are the ones that are in the gold. These are the ones that are in the aqua, and I just wrote down the names here. So it's kind of like my swatch book, play, smack and dragon, doodle. Now here's my Arteza watercolors. I did put some tabs throughout. Now these are just little sticky tabs that you can move or you can put down and move around. I took them all. I had a bunch in there with dividing all my swatches, but I took them all out when I did the uh, painting the edges. Because they, they were just obviously in the way. So these are my Arteza watercolors, which again, these come in the tubes. They come in the um, little little tubes. And I bought the little um, trays, the little uh, pans, and just taped them down into a tin. And um, But these are all the swatches for those. Hi, Holly D. Anybody else I missed? So there's the watercolor. And what I these are from another journal. I'd put these, I'd swatch these out in another sketchbook. Uh, I just cut them out and put them in and tape them in here. So they were all together. 
These are the um, Arteza gouache. And then here are the, these are the Black Widow, uh, Black Widow sets, which I haven't played with a lot yet. I need to do more with these Black Widows. But these are the dark skins, the light skins, the Cobra set, the Scorpion set. And um, the spider set. So there's all the uh, all the different ones for um, the Black Widows. Then this was we did some little testing with some um, of the uh, different uh, water brush markers last week. Here's where we tested the Arteza, the Zig, the Flexible, Super Tip. And that's just on reg on this paper here. And then here it is here on watercolor paper. So different, uh, just, just different tests. I haven't, I haven't uh, swatched out my Arteza real brush. These right here. I haven't uh, swatched these out yet. The Arteza water brush set. I haven't done that yet in this book. So I got to do that. And uh, again, you know, just just having, oh, here's a color book page that we just uh, washi taped in so we could test different markers, whether they would go through. Dee, Dee, you can use the magnets. You can cut and glue, attach your tin. Um, can, you can use magnets. Oh, you mean put magnets on the bottom of every one of these? Uh, no, that's too much trouble. <laughs> Judy, that's too much trouble. I just put down the double-sided dots, see, and then the paper that the dots were, or the the foam that with the dots were in, and they just stick. They just stick in there. <laughs> yeah, the lizard, lizard, lizard. <laughs> oh my gosh! Hi, Darla. Yeah, you could do that, Judy, but uh, yeah, I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm not I know myself. You know, people would suggest a lot of cool ideas, but I know myself. If I know I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna take it. Okay, here come the kitties. Here you are, big guy. You're gonna have to move though. You can't walk through the watercolor. Come on, go on. There you go. Uh <laughs> go on down, get on down, baby. Get on down. Um, so here we tested uh some of the white markers on black acrylic paint oh no 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 we gotta get down and then uh on on paper look at the difference it makes here this is uh the arteza on um brush uh, arteza paint markers on paper and on acrylic and here's the posca on acrylic and paper so you can just see the difference so I'm just kind of flipping through here, just to show you what I've got in here so far. Um, so there's color book pages that came in Jane's uh, art book. And uh, at least you're honest about it. <laughs> well, I'm not really lazy. Uh, I really am not. Um, but um, convenience, I should say. I know the I know what's convenient for me and what takes time and what I won't do, you know. It, yeah. And so there's more. So what I would do is I tape a page in, skip a couple pages, which will be um, probably smack and drag a lot of them. But then I can sketch in here. I can sketch on top of the paint. Uh, sketch on top of whatever. So let me just kind of flip here through most of the rest of this. Then some of her pages have watercolor type paper in them. So you can do watercolor. Here's another Smack and Dragon. So just different. She has different, I think she has four or five different types of paper in that book. Smack and Dragon. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, so that you can play. So I just thought it would be fun to have some blank pages amongst the other pages. So that's what I did. So I just made my own. And you can see it's pretty, you know. If you do a book like this, though, 
Uh oh, thank you, Sammy. If you do a book like this where you're adding a lot of wet medium or if you're doing, uh, you know, gluing things in, you want to work front to back, back to front, in the middle, because if you don't do it like back and forth and in the middle, you're, you're going to warp your spine. It's going to warp. Okay. And um, so this is, this is my most current journal. I do have another one. I did put my handprint on it. I have another one that's similar with Smack and Dragon. Um, this one has, this one's for collage. So this one has all kinds of collage bits. It's got Smack and Dragon. You can see where I have Smack and Dragon and then it's got collage. So it's kind of similar, but there's, you know, there's no Jane stuff in this one. This one's going to be all collage. And then uh, this one will be sketching and ideas and doodling and swatching. Yeah, a Jane hybrid. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'm working on that. Then, um, what else do I have right here that I'm working on? Um, somebody asked, they wanted to see this one again. This was the, di not the Dilusions, the... Um, Where's Eileen? She knows the name of this one. Somebody else. Um, not. Um, what's the name of it? It's the Ranger. Which one is it? Here we go. Do Dina Wakely. The Dina Wakely one. Um, does it have a name? Yes. Uh, I don't know if it has something other than just Dina Wakely. But it's got all different types of stuff. Mixed media. There it is. I, this is why I keep this... <laughs> The titles because I never remember. Thank you guys. Everyone's going to Dina Wagley. So anyway, what I'm doing with this one again, that's my handprint. I just put this little jewel on there. Um, what I'm doing in this one is I wanted to play with a lot of ink backgrounds. A lot of this is ink. Now, a lot of the paper in here is kind of a, a canvasy type watercolor there's all this uh which i don't like any of this i don't like this burlap i don't even i'm, I'm probably gonna it, it looks cool just with the strings hanging out i just don't like working on all that burlap but anyway so what i did with these these are backgrounds so that when i do let's see if i can find one um when i do my little animals and want to take you know photos of them ah here's one let's oh here's two okay Ah, oh, all these little bags here. Let me move all these out of the way. When I do my little animals, this is low tech, low tech uh, digi copy uh, What do you call it? A scanning, <laughs> photographing. So I, I do hand do the little animals here. And then I can put them on here wherever I want on my backgrounds and photograph them. So I can photograph them anywhere I want. And then I usually go in on uh, on my uh, tablet, on my uh, iPad in the, uh, what is it? Starts with a P. What is it called? The program that you can fix things, alter things. Ah, oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of too many things this morning. Um, anyway, uh What's the next? No, it's not Photoshop. Procreate. Thanks, Pacola. Procreate. Go into Procreate and like add the whiskers on there, back on there, and stuff like that. So uh, what? That's what uh, I'll go into Procreate and do some little tweaking. But so anyway, I say that to say that this whole book, this whole book is uh, like for backgrounds for those kind of things. Okay, why is my? Let's see, is my camera. There we go little crooked sorry guys it's making it look tilty thank you yeah <laughs> so so all these pages here are and not every animal is going to match or go right like this one's way too light for this background but i just want to show you that i made a whole background i made a whole book of backgrounds to use for that purpose so and they're they're inks they're with uh, the acrylic inks. So here's another. This is one of those canvas. I, I I don't know. I don't. I love this paper. It's it's like a textury kind of canvasy paper, but it's not canvas, you know. So uh, and it takes ink so nicely. So I'm just going to throw these up here just so you can get the idea. Yeah. 
Uh, and then I'll just do a little bit of uh, Procreate Digi stuff, you know. Um, yeah, here's one with the hole out of it. Done a couple other things. This is with a stencil. This is uh, this is a napkin there. You know, played with it here and there. So, again, it's just a whole book of backgrounds. Well, <laughs> with the occasional something thrown in. This was Jane Davenport. I had just got her, I think, at the time. I just got her napkins. So we played with the napkins here. And then these are my, oh, where's Janet? Here's my hand-carved bee stamp, Janet. <laughs> Janet, by the way, if y'all um, didn't catch it at the very beginning, uh, Janet is going to be carving stamps today. So, um, yeah, there's one of my bee stamps, Janet. Um, and this is just one of my hand-drawn, I just drew that, uh, drew that bee. Uh, and this is, that's a Jane Davenport face. So there's occasional something in here. Again, I, I just don't uh, I don't like that fabric in there. Mm -hmm. But I did something with most of it. Here's a stencil. This is with the modeling paste or molding paste. Um, so just different, you know, different uh, backgrounds. And then this one, again, was this Jane... Was this a Jane stencil? I don't remember. This is out of a color book here. Napkins. I think I tested a napkin journal in here. Y'all know we have our own, we have a different book for napkin journaling. But, uh, you know. So, anyway, for whoever, I forgot who asked about wanting to see this book again. So, that I really like this page here. That one's pretty. <clears throat> so anyway, they're good backgrounds for uh, working, putting your work on and doing a little digi work. Not anything like what Eileen does with her backgrounds. But anyway, I just wanted to share that because somebody asked. It was you and Sharon, Terry. Okay, well, thank you. There you go. All right, then let's see. Um. Okay, I won't get out my other mixed media books at this time. All right, so let me show you what else. Oh, and then again, I'm going to work on, um, these are my uh, Arteza watercolor uh, pencils that I might work with the Arteza watercolors. So we got that out. Now let me show you a couple books and things that we got. Oh, let me show you this real quick. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby with, I got this with a coupon because everything else that I bought, I did go back. Uh, where, I, I know Eileen's not here, but Janet told me, G, uh, Eileen, this is for you. Janet made me. Y'all know I have all kinds of metal rulers and T-squares and all that. And at the time when I did that walkthrough, when I did that walkthrough with Hubster and uh, picked out some uh, things on clearance, Janet's rulers at her um, at her Hobby Lobby were all on sale. Well, mine weren't. But then when I went back, they were on sale. So Janet said I had to get this one. Well, <laughs> and I got it because I just didn't have a metal yardstick. So, uh, yeah, this, this is, <laughs> this is, I bought this for you to show you, Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> and again, they're on sale. This is normally $9.99. It was on sale for $2.49. So I got a new metal. I have a wood yardsticks. I have wood ones. I have, even have an antique vintage yardstick, a wooden one. But I don't have a metal one. I have a metal T-square. But I didn't have a metal yardstick. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> so I had to show this. Yes, they did have them awesome rulers, right? And, um, you know, they're all marked down from $10, $12 to like 2 bucks. So anyway, I did get a couple little things at uh, when I went back to Hobby Lobby. What else did I get? Um, uh, oh, yeah. So y'all know I usually use, let's see here. I usually use, uh, when I'm doing my art cards, do I have one handy that I can reach up here and get? Oh, no, it's not handy. But anyway, you know, when I do my art cards and I usually use um, DAP, this uh, crackle, you know, um, spackle, crackle spackle. <laughs> this is what I usually use 
uh, in place of molding paste or texture paste. I use this. Well, I just happened to walk by the Hobby Lobby and saw this is normally 10 bucks. It was for $2.24. So I got the basic modeling paste. I haven't used it yet. have no idea how well it's going to work, but I want to use this on the art cards and see how they do. Um, let's see. I was given a print on canvas and have Fila gel pens. So are you going to, is it something you're going to color on canvas with gel pens? Oh, Dave, that'll be, do you, are you on Instagram so we can see? Hi, Anastasia. I might, I'm sure I missed some people coming in. Le bookworm, le bookworm. Hello. It's been a while, girl. Um, so after you did the walkthrough with Javi, I went and got a watercolor book marked down to four. I know, right? Right, Kim? And now, none of my, well, I didn't say none. There might have been one or two books that were marked down, but nothing I bought. I didn't buy any books at my Hobby Lobby this last trip. Trust me, I got enough that I bought over the... <laughs> But anyway, so I got this for two bucks, uh, regularly 10 to test out to see, you know, just because this is usually what I get because it's so cheap to use uh, on, on the making like frames and borders on my art cards. But uh, yeah, nothing really big. However, this was not on sale. So I used my 40% off coupon. It was only $4.99, but I got 40% off. And I got this. I'm going to share it with Zandra. I have not even opened it. I was going to wait till we we're here to open it. <laughs> uh -huh. You're welcome, Judy B. Hi, Gail. I want to tell you how much I spent. Did you do um did you do a haul on last Friday, Vonnie? I think I saw part of it. I saw part of the recording, Vonnie. I think, did you show it last Friday's show? I don't know. Hi, Kenny. Okay, so I got this to share with Sandra, who she's not here right now, but uh, I'm going to send her some. We'll see what it's like. I haven't opened it yet. I waited. I waited on the show before to open it. Okay, so it's this. It was in the fabric section, and it's ribbon, and it came in pink green. I really wanted a blue, but it didn't have a blue. They had some other yellow, I think. I think that yellow, pink, and this green. This was the closest. Oh, well, Vonnie, you need to show some of it. So I got this to share with Zandra because y'all know Zandra and her mermaid. <coughs> I haven't opened it yet, so we're going to open it together. But I thought the next time I drew a big mermaid piece or something that we would use this and like piece it on to a mermaid tail. And of course, Xander will probably do the same in her art journals. All right. So let's open it up together. It's from the, it's called the Ribbon Boutique Faux Leather Wide Ribbon. I even had somebody ask me when I was standing in line, oh, is that leather? I went, oh, yeah, no, for $4.99, I don't think it's real leather. <laughs> That's what I tell the girl standing behind me. But we're going to open it up and have a feel, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let me get a, let's see here. Let's catch the little edge here. Well, I don't think I can peel it. Oh, maybe I can. Here we go. Yeah, all right, we can peel it. Don't need to cut it. All right, so let's, uh, let's feel this together, right? And again, it's uh, $4.99. It was over in the, it's over in the ribbon section at Hobby Lobby. Over like in the fabric section, which I rarely go over to the fabric section. I just don't sew. Yeah, leather, fake leather. Yeah, but let's see if it's a mermaid, if it's uh, scales, is that scleather? <laughs> is that scleather? <laughs> oh my gosh, Julie. <laughs> because <laughs> you know scale okay all right so anyway that's what it is that's uh it's over in the uh it's over in the fabric section which i just don't get over to very much <laughs> sorry i'm tickling myself okay so oh it is like a it is like a pleather okay i didn't think it was gonna be this thick i thought it was gonna be more paper like maybe from a fake mermaid i <laughs> can good one from a fake mermaid. So again, it comes in pink, green, and yellow. And the pink, I, I was kind of torn between pink and green, but I thought this one looks more real. 
<laughs> so I got this one instead of the pink, but there's pink, yellow. If they went on sale for 50% off, I might get a pink one. I didn't care for the yellow one. It looked, I don't know, it didn't even look like a goldfish. It just, I don't know. So yeah, I thought this was a good color for a mermaid. But look how, see how it changes color? See how sometimes it looks blue? That's why I liked it. It's like a hologram, you know, or a holla, holla, holla. So anyway, let's see how much is on here. Not a whole lot. Okay, so um, sometimes I look at this and go, oh, this would be, I could use this for something, but I won't. I know myself, guys. I, this will sit. This will be one of those things that sits around till Denise comes over and throws it away. So I'm going to save her the trouble, and I'm just going to throw it away. All right. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to half this with, with Z, and it will be folded. I'm going to send it to an envelope, you know, not on the roll. It's, you know, where's my big scissors? Where are they? Oh, here they are. So I am going to cut this in half and send half of it to Zandra and see what she can do with it in her art journal, All right? Ooh, it's, it is thick. It is pleatherly. It is pleather, you know. <laughs> uh, hi, Sandy. Gracie, Gail, Karen. I know I'm missing a whole lot of people. Uh, hey, Azure. Poor Famer. <laughs> but I got to say, guys, um, speaking of mermaids and fake, and fake stuff, it made me think. Let me go. Hang on. Let me go get the book I'm reading. Hang on. Hang on. I'm always reading more than one book, so I can't say this is the only book I'm reading now, but um, I'm about halfway done with this. I'm going to try to finish this one up this week. Um, I showed the cover and just talked a little bit about it. The lady from the Black Lagoon, and um, she was like one of the one of the first, if not the first, um, makeup artist. Ma not, and I don't, no, no, no. Let me back up. Not makeup. Um makeup illustrator she didn't do the actual makeup she designed she designed uh like the creature from the black lagoon so even though she's she does have credit for it now oh no 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 baby you're gonna have to get down and uh but at the time that she the author wrote this book um, special effects maybe I think that's not what it, i was trying to think of what it was called at the time so she started out at, uh, well, she went to an art school in California that combined and I think became Cal, Cal Arts. Uh, but anyway, then she went to work for Disney. She was in the paint and inking department that painted and inked the cells. I don't know if y'all know this. This was really interesting. There's so many interesting things in this book. And I did follow the girl on Instagram, the author. Her name is Mallory Elmira. She's on Instagram. You can follow her. Um, but anyway... At the time when Disney, you know, the inking and the painting of the cells, there was a whole room. It was women. It was all women that did that. Women did the inking and painting of the cells. And so she started there uh, after she, you know, graduated or left. Yeah, she, I think she graduated. Anyway, left uh, the school. The school and Disney worked together when Disney was first starting up the animation. I'm talking way back like in the 30s, guys. That's when this all started. She ended up working on um, creature movies in the 50s, like the Abbott and Costello meet the wolf man, you know, the masks and the, you know, she did a lot of that stuff. She designed a lot of that stuff. Oh, thanks, Elaine. Yeah, I do get excited when I show stuff. To I can't help it. I just, you know. So anyway, um, it, it, and it talks a lot about her, what she went through. She did uh, part-time modeling. She did, um, she was a like a extra, they call them extras now. I think they said back then they're called background girls. You know, she'd ha she might have a line or two. So she was in a few movies. But the way, well, how she grew up and how she grew up, um, her dad was one of the uh, the engineer that helped build the Hearst the Hearst Castle. It's just so much. It's uh, so many things tied together. Um, yeah, Danny. 
So she went, yeah, she went from being uh, just the paint and uh, ink girl. Then she started working on some animation. Then she went into creature and design. Yeah. Anyway, it, there's just so much tied to old Hollywood and the old, um, you know, Disney and, and the Westmores as the makeup artist. And anyway, so, yeah. So anyway, have you read this book, Danny girl? Have you read this book? So, and again, you can follow Mallory O'Meara. Here's a picture right here. She, I think now she has blue hair. She's blue hair and tattoos. And she talks a lot about the, the um, women had to go through, especially back then. And they still do. But, you know, she especially addressed as far, you know, I'm only halfway done. So, uh, yeah. So, Hubster is the one that found this for me. He, he talked about it uh, when he did the book thing with me a couple weeks ago. And um, he found this one at Barnes and Noble and said, look, you're going to, you would like this. And so of course I read the coat inside, you know, dust jacket. And yeah, I I'm really enjoying it. There's just so much backstory to it. There's so much backstory and how, um, how she had to really find her. Cause she wasn't, she wasn't uh, Millicent Patrick. She wasn't like, documented but a lot of people weren't documented back in the days in making movies and things uh like they are now like she talks about how movie credits now could go for 20 minutes after the movie naming every single person but like i think she said when they did the creature and, and i'm not no don't quote me because i'm not sure if it was on the creature but i think there was 900 and something people that worked on that movie you know all the set directors the designers the makeup the everything you know uh, so you just don't know how many people are behind the scenes. And uh, so anyway, um, one of the things that I found really interesting, I don't want to do spoilers, but I'm going to tell you this one thing. Mallory talked about when she was little. Now she's in her 20s. She's young, guys, you know. <clears throat> but she would watch Fantasia when she was little. So that would have been, what, in the 80s or something? She When she watched it. And the big scary creatures, there's a name for them. I don't remember the name. She talks about the name of the creature. The big like demon creature, bat wing thing at the toward the end of the movie. When she was little, she loved that part. She ended up being kind of like a um, goth monster geek girl, the, the uh, author did. And uh, so... She loved that part in the movie. She wanted, kept reading, asking her grandparents, I want to watch the movie again. And she loved that part. She always loved scary movies and creatures from that time, ever since she saw Fantasia as a little girl. Well, when she grew up and then she found out about the creature, she started researching Millicent. Come to find out, Millicent was the one that designed that demon creature in Fantasia. That just gives me goosebumps. I mean, I literally have goosebumps. Isn't that just like, so like, bye, Dave. Yeah, sure. So anyway, things like that. And she ties all these little things together like that with her life and Millicent's life. And Millicent, you know, she had she has some a lot of tragedies. And um, I won't get into it too much. I don't want to be a to spoil it. But I thought that part was so neat. Oh, look, look, that looks good right there, doesn't it? Yeah. So anyway, when I got this, I got it for Z, you know, me and Z to half. But um, it just made me think, oh, yeah, look, you know, creature design and mermaids thing. And yeah. So thank you. Uh, Pacola just put a link in for the lady from the Black Lagoon. It's really it's an interesting book. It, it really is interesting. Okay, so uh, yeah, here's uh, here's a couple pieces here. We'll see what we want to do with it. Again, I'm going to send half of it to Zandra. All right, moving on. I got a couple other things. A hubster finally got, he wanted this book. He had me order it about like two months ago before it was even published. It just came out. It was even, it was back, I don't say back order, just Amazon back order. Anyway, it was delayed. It was delayed from the publisher, but he finally got it. And it's about Joe Frazier. Hubster loves, he loves anything that has to do with spot. Well, I don't say all sports because he didn't like all sports, but he likes boxing and he's followed Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, all of them for years. 
uh, well, since he was a kid, actually. And uh, some of the fights that he'd listened to on the radio when he was young. Uh, so anyway, he really wanted this book. So I ordered it for him and it was like delayed. So finally got, yeah, the original Fantasia it came out in 1940. Yeah, I'm taught, I think Millicent was born in 1912, 13. She was born in like 19 teens. So I, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but she, yeah, she was, um, she was on the original Fantasia movie at Disney. Yeah, she worked at Disney. Millicent did. So anyway, um, well, he, this is, he read that like that much just last night. So uh, he's really into the book. So I said, I won't lose your place. But anyway, I wanted to show this. He says it's an awesome book. Um, you know, reading about boxers doesn't interest me, but I, he'll stop. And this is what we do when we read at night. We both, both read at night and we'll stop and tell each other about what we're reading. So like I'll stop reading on Millicent and, and he'll read me two or three pages out of this book and then tell me what was going on, what he remembers. We just like, that's what we do. We read, discuss, reminisce, you know, that's when we, what we do at night you know, we shut down the computers and everything. I usually, now after we read and he, if he goes to sleep, then I'll turn on my iPad and watch um, YouTube videos in bed late, you know, after, you know, after lights are out, but I, we turn all the computers and everything off and probably, you know, at, at least by dinner. And so we're not, we're just not on the computers at night. Now <laughs> I say that I have my phone at my elbow at all times. So it's not like I've turned off technology. So don't get like, Oh, that's so, you know, no, no, I got my, I got my Twitter. I got my Facebook. I got my Instagram. I got my mail. I got it all right there. <laughs> but we, we both read at night. So that's what he's reading. That the other one is what I'm reading. Okay. So uh, let's see a couple other things. Uh, and, and Faithful Mess is not here. She was having some computer issues. I don't think she's here today. Okay. Oh, Terry's got to go. Don't overdo and take care of that puppy. All right. So now let's see. I wonder if I, here, here's the picture again. There's Terry's, uh, that's Terry's living room <laughs> with the new puppy uh, and other, um, uh, other random uh, pu uh, uh, pets. <laughs> But anyway, so on my soundboard now, I'm going to have to do the Jaguar, but now I'm going to have to find, is there a, there's an angry cat. Where's the, do I have a, do I have a little dog? I got to have a, I'm, I'm, I'm reading them all right here, guys. I got, whoops, uh, I accidentally hit that one. So in, <laughs> anyway, there's like, here's the, here's, this one's for Terry. And, uh, but let's see, there's angry cat. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything that might go with, uh, I'm not seeing anything that might go with your new puppy. There's probably one here somewhere, but, um, <laughs> I'm just not seeing it. Well, anyway, Terry, thank you. Thank you for being here. I don't know why I keep hitting that one. This is some kind of bees, I guess. Okay, well, all right. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye, Terry. So this book I'm gonna blame on, and we'll get to the we'll get to the coloring in a minute. <laughs> Sorry, it's just chatting. You know, I can't help it. I can't help it. I have to. Uh, yeah, I didn't see a barking dog, Debbie. I know. I looked. So uh, anyway, Faithful Mess had got this book, uh, and she did she did a flip through it on her uh, show. Uh, it's called Rookie Yearbook. This is four. There's four of them out. I have a, one of the other ones coming. If I like it, I might order the other two. So there's four of them. And they're what they are is a high school yearbook kind of documentary type thing. I haven't re really read it or, or didn't know anything about it. I, I got to be honest. I got it for collage. Okay. So yeah, Faith Enabled. Right. Faithful Mess Enabled. And she got it for collage too. <laughs> So anyway, but it's a big, thick book and there's four different ones, but it's got, um, it's got a lot of things about, and there's a lot of articles. Look at all, there's lots of articles. Look at all this. And, um, you know, it's teen, which, you know, you want to keep up with the, what's going on. Oh, that flashed me out here. Hang on. Let me fix that lighting. Um, turn that light. There we go. 
And it's got all kinds of, this one's from 2014. I think it's 14, this is number four. So there's, I think, 2010 or 11, 12, 13, 14. I don't know if there's any more coming out or if that if she just did. And this, I think this person that did this is probably a U Tavi Jev Jevonson, I probably a YouTuber. Don't know, you know. But um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, collage. But it's got all different kinds of articles, and you know, it talks about what's going on with their sex lives, and you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, but look at all the illustrations. I bought it. I bought it when Faith flipped through this. Uh, I bought it for the uh, illustrations, the uh, collage uh, prospects. So I'm not, I can't go through every page because obviously we'll be here all day. But it's got lots of articles, lots of art, lots of illustration. If you're an illustrator, you know, you might look into doing things like for books like this. If you want to do book illustrations. Here's somebody took the fo their photographs and painted them out. Painted out the um, photographs, you know. Uh, we've seen, uh, we've probably done it years ago. I haven't done one in a long time. We do that with magazines. You can paint out, paint the girls out with magazines. Um, but lots of articles. I do want to read some of this. I want to read uh, some of it. And uh, then I'll probably, after I read it, I don't know, Boo might want it. Otherwise, I'll cut it up. See, here's some more. Like altering the photographs. I know, isn't it cool, guys? I thought it was cool when Faith, when Faithful Mesh showed it, and then I found out that there was like four of them. Look, see, look at this. See, look at that. So cool looking. So yeah, little cartoons. But I want to show you at the toward the back. So look, like here's a whole like comic. I'm just kind of really quickly flipping through it. Some photography, you know. And I remember when in Cam's uh, yearbooks, they would have all kinds of things like they have a uh, photography section, an art section, and they had all the different, you know, that course had their music and their sports and all that. But um, the art, the art, um, not groups, what do you call them? Art, uh, anyway the people that were in the art groups, AP art and all that, they would have different things in the yearbook. And uh, Cameron had one of his pieces. I think it might have been this one. He might have had this girl in the yearbook. This is one of Cameron's. Um, I, I turned them into stickers, um, some of Cameron's art. And uh, I made him, he has a whole bunch of different art like this. So I turned them all into stickers and send them to him. But I just kept one in my phone there. I think that one might have mm, no it was the one at the botanical gardens okay it wasn't that one it was a different one um <clears throat> oh you're welcome uh color creative i have i've got almost like a thousand videos from the last five years my ones before that when i was on Ustream for about four years before that those are not uploaded to youtube uh, for four years or so, I streamed on on uh, Ustream and didn't upload. And then the girls started getting after me and said, you need to put them on YouTube. So for the past five years, um, streaming nine years about uh, so far. Um, so for the past five years, those videos are up on, on uh, YouTube. And there's about a thousand of them. And I'd say probably at least a third of them have collage in them. So there's plenty of collage fodder and I try to keep everything in my playlist or Pacola will email me. <laughs> uh, I try to put them all in the playlist and, uh, you know, uh, under mixed media, collage, art journal, you know, and then of course color book, whatever else we do. So there's plenty of stuff. Hi, Louise. So, um, yeah, go back and check them out. Yeah, go back and check them out. Okay, so back to this book real quick. Some Dear Diary. And, you know, I, I don't know. Every now and then I'll even buy me a YA book at the store. And I think Robin, Robin, don't, do you read? Uh, oh, did she have to leave? I think Robin does uh, YA book reviews too. See, so look, Brain Map. Look at the illustrations. I just love it. I love everything about this. It's just like right up my alley. I don't, I don't know about the articles yet. You know? <laughs> But again, here's more um, 
you know. Oh, here we go. Channeling my 15-year-old self. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like this. But. Um, and then they have different things here in the back. They have these like poster things, uh, formative tunes, uh, the songs that it, um, it influenced them. And then they have these little posters in the back. And it's just all on, you know, it's like create space type paper, right? It's very thin paper. And they got that grid paper. Then they have some different collage type papers. Look, cutouts. You can make your whole a room setting. Here's a collage kit at the back. So you can cut out all this stuff. Isn't this cool? Yeah. Oh, you like my taste in books? Thank you, Jersey. Um, so these are just my art book tastes. You know, well, you know, I, I like I like reading. I love reading. I've always loved reading. I like biographies. I like mysteries. I like British mysteries. I, I, I love Sherlock Holmes, Ian Fleming, you know, uh, James Bond. That's what I liked when I was a kid. And uh, I've always loved reading ancient history. Hubster likes more like American history and modern history. I say modern history, but, you know, more recent history. I like ancient, ancient history, like the Middle Ages and before, you know. But anyway, here's a little jewelry box. So you can see, look, you can make a paper fan, but all this stuff you can cut up. And then look, stickers. There's a page of stickers at the back. I don't know. I just, I love this. You know, I love this. And so anyway, I have, this is the fourth one. I, I have this one. This one should be here today. Rookie yearbook two. So I still have to get one and three. But I thought I'd get one at a time, see if, make sure I really liked. This was the most recent one. So I thought they knew what they were doing by book four. I don't know if I'm going to like the other ones. But, and then, um, so I love stickers. Here's one of my one of my portfolios here that I, I work. This is one of, this is the one I'm writing my stories in. Um, this is my writing, my writing portfolio, which is, has writing and illustrations. But look, I got all kinds of, uh, yeah, I got all kinds of stickers all over this one. And on the back, some of these are Cameron's like that. These are Cameron's artwork, all these right here. So that's Cameron. And Cameron's my 19-year-old grandson. So um, that's his, that's his, 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 his. That's his. This one's, that's the one I have on the back of my phone. So I just turned a lot of his art into stickers and um, for him to give to his friends. But, uh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, those are some of the things I'm working on. You know, I'm always working on something. Okay, so there's that book. Now, what else do I have? Okay, I got two more things to show you. <laughs> and then we're going to start working. Uh, uh, yeah, he, uh, Jersey, he's always done art. Boo, my granddaughter, who's 16, she's always liked craft. She's always liked to make like three-dimensional things and f make frames and decorate flowers beading. She always liked to bead and make jewelry and friendship bracelets. She's always liked to do crafty things. Cameron never liked to do any of that. He liked to always draw. He's drawn since, you know, he was knee high to a grasshopper, you know, and they both just always had to run in my studio. They've always been able to use whatever they wanted, except the guillotine cutter. They've been able to use anything in my uh, studio. I know I've told the story a hundred times, but when Boo, <laughs> when Boo went to pre-K, she, I mean, she had to be, I don't know, four maybe? I, I can't really remember. And I'd probably say a different age every time, three, four. But she was in pre-K. And uh, back, you know, in pre-K, you, you give all the, you give all the um, supplies to the teacher and the teacher puts them in cabinets, you know, and saves them and doles them out as needed. You know, you didn't look like when we were growing up, we had our own desk with our own supplies. It was all kept in one of those little cardboard school boxes. We didn't have plastic ones back then. Um, <laughs> and we all kept our own supplies in our own little box in our desk. Well, now the teachers take it all up and put it in a cabinet and share with everybody. Well, when she was in pre-K and she had to do some project, let me find it right here. Yeah. All right. So the teacher handed out, uh, cause you just gave the teacher all the, all the, 
their supplies, right? So when she goes, the, the teacher gives them an assignment to cut something and glue something. So she hands out those little kid scissors, the little kid scissors with the rounded, you know what I'm talking about, the little, uh, they're like toy scissors, <laughs> you know, the little tiny, tiny ones. Okay, buy color creatively. And, uh, and um, her Elmer's glue. And she got that stuff. And I guess the teacher told this to Denise and Denise told me. But anyway, she says, what's this? She looked at the scissors, those little kid scissors. She goes, yeah, safety scissors. She goes, where am I? No, she didn't have them. I'm just showing you what she's used to using. Where are my Timmy scissors and my Eileen's tacky? <laughs> this is the stuff that she was used to using from day one. She used Timmy scissors and tacky glue. <laughs> So when the teacher handed out little safety scissors, you know, she's used to use, I mean, she could use, they could use everything, like I said, but the guillotine cutter when they were that age, you know, and of course now they can use what, <laughs> I know, right? Okay, so I got the Daphne's Diary, <coughs> the newest issue here. I did look for the new uh, Somerset Studios Art Journal, well, Stampington and Company. I look for the new art journaling magazine just to flip through it and see if I wanted to buy it. A couple of y'all have done flip throughs of it. <coughs> I don't know that I'll buy it. Uh, <laughs> you like that memory? Uh, I don't know if I'll buy it, but I wanted to look through it, but it's not in my uh, Barnes & Noble or Books A Million yet. So uh, let me uh, brighten this up again. Let's get a little bright. Let's get a little bright. Okay. Uh, yeah, see, the well, the teacher probably didn't know what Timmy scissors were or Eileen's tacky. You know, the teacher probably didn't know what that was. <laughs> you do, Shauna? Oh, so anyway. Um, okay, so uh, I got this. I sent mom. I bought the last month's or the month before. I think they're uh, every other month. Let's see. What is it? Just says number 14, 2019. They usually say like June, July, like that. But anyway, it's a UK magazine. They're not cheap. Uh, I did get um, I did get the last one for mom for a birth. I sent it as mother for Mother's Day. Part of her Mother's Day gift. I sent that one to her. So I bought the next newest one here. And uh, the you know they're not cheap, but they do come. They're imported from the UK. And. Uh, you know, just like Flow Magazine, Flow Magazine, and the Book of Paper, Flow Paper, they're, they're expensive. But if you use them, you know, so again, I'm not going to go through every page, but I'm going to kind of flip through just so you can see the kind of things that you can use for collage. So if you like to read the articles and then, you know, use them. Like here's, uh, what are you supposed to do? Oh, make some drink, straw, um, you know, straw, what do you call it? And they're paper straws straw um to, to designate your drink or whatever so oh where's eileen i'm gonna have to send those to her <laughs> uh, no i won't do that to you eileen so anyway they have all kinds of things uh, gardening food recipe decorations but again this is a kind of stuff that's great for collage and it's not wanting to flip very easily but look at that border see that border Oh, there's Eileen is here. <laughs> Sorry, Eileen. No, I wouldn't do that to you, Eileen. Uh, and there's quotes, recipes again, you know. And then here's some stickers. And then there's a little, I think there's a little book in here. They always have all kinds of, it's like flow. They always have little booklets and little drawing ideas. Artist, uh, focus on artist. This this woman, I guess, uh, does um, ceramics. There she is holding her sketchbook. Drawing tips, what's hidden. This is one of these. Uh, now, I'll never do this. I mean, diamond painting is one thing, but trying to see those numbers. But anyway, you're supposed to do like color all the number twos blue, all the threes red, you know, and see what's hidden. Um, <clears throat> you know, and then they have shopping, gardening. Uh, and it's all, you know, from the UK. And then here's a little um, uh, how to say hello, thank you, probably where's the bathroom in all these different languages. It's just like a little translator book. Of course, now everybody's got it on their phone, you know, 
somebody could speak into your, you know, you can go ask some, you know, say like into a translator, you know, and just say like, where's the nearest restaurant and then click a button and then put it to the person and it would say it in their language. You know, you have a translator right in your phone. Mm -mm. Okay. So uh, yeah. Writing, journaling. So just that's beautiful, isn't it? How to do uh, woodworking, sanding and stripping color. I mean, paint off of old wood, some sunglass things. Oh, look, put sunglasses on or little glasses on a stick. So anyway, it's just there's just so many awesome things, good articles. And then you can cut it up. You know. Different little tips and little tips and techniques on uh, illustrating. It's just, you know, it's just a beautiful magazine. Uh, I don't buy it every other month. I just buy it occasionally. I usually flip through it and see if I want to get it. And uh, like I said, I didn't cut up the last one because I sent it to mom. So anyway, uh, hi, Meta. Who else am I missing? Melinda, Kristen. I know. Uh, hi, Devin Rex. I know I'm missing people. But anyway, so I got that. And then one more book, and then we'll start coloring. <laughs> I got the new um, uh, Imagine FX effects. Uh, there's a, there's a digi one, and there's a sketchbook one. And what it is, uh, 164 pages of the very best fantasy art. Now I love these, uh, and and Cameron, as soon as he sees I have them, he wants them. So because they're not cheap, this is like you're paying for a book price on this. This is the price of a book, this magazine. And um, so I love the fantasy art in these. And uh, so I'm going to try to flip through. And if you see a naked girl, don't email me. But uh, I do try to keep it family friendly. But all kinds of fantasy art creatures, you know, pretty girls. Um, so anyway... Um, I, I, I do collect these. I don't subscribe to them. I always, I like being able to go hunt up magazines. Um, it's just like a challenge. So if it's sent to you, it's not like a challenge, but like that being said, Cam loves these <laughs> and every time uh, and he hasn't been here in a while. So I have two now I have two of them because, uh, the, all the other ones he's taken. So, uh, but he does, he does like it, but it's a put out by Imagine FX. And they do digi, a lot of digi stuff. Oh, let's see here. So here's some, I guess, some of the other uh, ones there that they recommend or have something to do with. But anyway, lots of creatures, lots of, you know. It's, and what they are, there's from sketchbooks from, let me see how many artists are in this one. How many artists? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, maybe sixteen. There. Um, eighteen, twenty-two, twenty-four. I don't know. Maybe thirty. I'm guessing thirty artists, thirty different artist sketchbooks, like the inside of artist sketchbooks is what it is. So I'm just guessing that that's how many. But uh, yeah, so it's an awesome book if you like fantasy art. Okay, so all oh, thank you. I, we do our best, Devin Rex. So there's all the books and magazines updates on that. So now we're going to go ahead. And if you weren't here at the beginning, I did show a um, a flip of the ones that I've done in this book, partially or I have are working on, or uh, you know different. Uh, so I already showed those. I won't show them again. But this is what we're going to work in. We're going to work in Serene. And and I cannot pronounce his name, but his he goes by Nicholas Filbert. So if you look up Nick Filbert or Nicholas Filbert on Instagram, Twitter, wherever, just look up Nick Filbert. And that's who de designed this one. It's He's done Serene. He's done Irene. He's done, he did this poster that I'm working on. Uh, this is the poster that I'm working on. Um, it's a huge poster, and I I work on it here and there. So I'll just kind of flip it open so you can see. So I base coated the whole poster with Copics. 
The whole thing is base coated with alcohol markers, mostly Copics. It might be a, a ooh, ooh, ooh in there somewhere. And now I'm shading with uh, pencil. So if you see the blue smoke there or the clouds, that's already shaded with pencil. So, yeah. So I'm working on this poster. Luckily, it folds up. And I just leave it out usually and work on it here and there. <clears throat> work on it every now and then. But he's the same one that did Serene, Irene. There's, uh, he's got a couple, two or three of them out. And I love them all. I mean, I, but this is about, and me and Sammy, I think both say, if we could only have one color book, this would be it. Serene. All right, so this is a page I picked out. I have no colors or anything else picked out for it yet. Uh, I do know I want the background to be black. And uh, so before I, and, and most, I still do, um, I like to use watered down washes of acrylic paint. So if you don't have watercolors, you can do this with craft paint. Uh, you just water it down. Okay, now when I do my backgrounds, I don't water it down. I just use it full strength so it's nice and flat and matte and, um, you know, flat black. But you can do washes of acrylic paint and your color pencils will go over it like a dream. Let me see what I'm doing. Let me pick one out here. Um, I'm going to look in my book here. Um, I can't remember which one has got a base of acrylic. Some of these have markers. But you can just base coat with acrylic paint and then go over it with pencil. Pencil will go as long as you have matte. You have to have matte craft paper. I'm uh, craft paper. Matte craft paint. <laughs> because your pencils won't go over shiny or metallic. I mean, you could hard press down and get one layer or something down on your um, on something satin or shiny, but you're not going to be able to layer and blend. You won't be able to layer and blend. Let's see, I want to try to get at least close enough that I've got the whole piece in here. Okay. Yeah, so you like your Arteza watercolors? Um so anyway, what I'm going to do, though, today is I've got them out. I put my Arteza. These came in the little tubes. I squeezed them out. I bought the little half pan things here. Bought these little pans like this. And I put uh, double-sided foam tape under each one. And so you can just stick it down and then you can, you know, I can add more. Uh, somebody asked about them cracking. Yes, some of them do crack. But again, I don't care because I'll just go back in here. I'll wet them all down. This is not like a portable palette where I'm going to worry about them. Oh, they might crack and drop out. Uh, yeah, it's, this isn't going anywhere. But um, Arteza also sells a set of watercolors in the tin already. Now, it's only like, mm, is it 36 colors, I think? This is the 90, 92, 6, let me see how many. Uh, 60. This is 60 colors. They sell a um, tin with the watercolors already, you know, in it, not the squeeze out kind, but the little pans already. And apparently those don't crack. Um, so, you know, you have to test them out. Can one do that with gouache? Uh, you mean, what? yeah, I got a gouache one too. Yeah. Let's see. I got the Arteza gouache. And again, this is not what they came in. I just put them in here. But here's my gouache set. And uh, same thing. These came in the tubes. And I squeeze them out. And I just water them down, you know, when I want to use them. Oh, yeah. You can underpaint. Well, here's the thing about gouache, though. Uh, you're going to have... your <laughs> the, the thing about gouache is that it's more opaque. Well, you don't want it opaque on a on a uh on a color book page you don't want to lose your lines so you can use gouache but you're going to have to water it down to watercolor consistency which you can do just have you don't want to cover up your lines that's the thing so even when i'm using my acrylic paint it's watered down watered down so that you still see the color book lines 
right? So you can shade. This is just uh, the underpainting. Yeah, you can use as long as you water it down, Bonnie. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to go ahead and paint the background here. So um, I'm just going to put out some black. And we'll see how far. You know, obviously, we are not going to finish this today. Uh, I will get as far as I can. I'll do some sections to try to uh, show you where it's going. And I always try to either update you. I'll, I don't post. Very rarely do I post whips works in progress. I do one occasionally, but I don't like posting whips. Uh, I want to only, I like to post finished pieces. So once they're finished, you will see them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay. So now no water in this black paint. And I just want to paint the background. So we'll see how far we get. If it starts looking like it's going to take me a while to do the background, I'll just stop. And uh, hi, Gray. I'll stop and just start working on another section. And uh, let's see here. Let's move that over just a little. Okay, I'm trying to get everything in camera without having to cross back and forth. Let me just set that there. There we go. So if you have any questions, put it in caps. Um, get my brush wet there. Um, this may be too big of a brush, but we'll see. So I paint the background a lot of times in a lot of my color books. This has got a little bend in the corner um, with flat acrylic paint. I like my Americana craft paint and I do different colors backgrounds, but certain colors, red, lime green, yellow, are still translucent, even though they're acrylic paints, they're still translucent and may take two coats. So if you want a flat background with no, just flat, you know what I mean by just flat here, uh, then if you're using red, lime green, or um, yellow and red, there's just certain colors, even in a, even in a matte, flat, opaque paint that you might need two colors because they're translucent. So yeah, um, if y'all have any questions or anything, I'm going to have to get a smaller brush for some of this. I'll try to get the bigger areas first and then go close up with a, a smaller brush. So if you have any questions, put them in caps. Thanks for everybody for being here. Thanks. We've got a couple hundred people here today. Thanks everybody for visiting. Thanks for all the thumbs up. Um, I don't, I, we don't mind lurkers, but if you want to uh, say hi to anybody or talk or bring, you know, bring yourself to the forefront, then we all know who's watching and we can go find you got whoever, you know, and follow you. So don't feel like you, you know, make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. Hi, Vanessa. And uh, remember, if you're asking me anything, guys, put it in caps so I see that, see that you're talking to me. So we'll work on this background for a little bit. Um, and then we'll go into the watercolor. <clears throat> watercolor won't harm the... Um, Melinda says, I've used Copics in mine, but afraid of the water damage in the book. It's not easy. Yeah. The thing with watercolors is because, you know, you, you layer. You layer watercolors to get them darker, right? If you're just base coating, if you're just doing a base coat with your uh, watercolor, you know, you're just usually putting on one coat. It's never the paint. It's not the paint that's hurting your paper. It's the amount of water you put on. So let's say you put one coat of watercolor, a color like her skin, for example, and you want to start shading her skin with watercolor. You have to let it dry. You have to either heat gun it or dry it in between. It's the water that pills your paper and hurts your paper. It's not the paint itself. It's the amount of water that you're putting. 
So you have to dry between layers. If you're only putting one layer of paint on and then you're going to color pencil on top, you're, you're, you know, you're pretty good to go just with one layer of water. And again, it's going to depend. You're going to have to, like, this is cards, you know, um, I'd say this is by 60 weight maybe. Um, you know, it's not like Create Space, although I'll do the same thing with Create Space paper. You just got to be uh, careful. You just got to be careful with the amount of water. It's the water that hurts your paper. So dry in between. I'm going to switch to the littler brush here. You could do... You could do the uh, background, like you could paint this background after you did your um, coloring. But if you want to do any kind of special effects on the, like stars, planets, um, here, let me show you this one here. Um, find it. Yeah. If you want to do something like this with color, this this right here, this is done with color pencil. If you want to do something like this with color pencil, you know, you got to have, or if you want an aura around, let's see my angel here. Let me put these down before I drop them. My, uh, here we go, this one. If you want to do any kind of an aura around with color pencil, you have to have the black first. The only reason this works like this, this like misty bit with color pencil, the only reason that works is because it's on acrylic paint. If this was all done with black pencil, and I know I've shown you a gazillion times, but I'm going to go and show you again because it's very important and not everybody knows it, even though, um, all right, here. I'll just do it on a post-it now. It doesn't matter. Okay, so here's black paint, black acrylic paint. So I'm just, let's just imagine you're doing your background, right? You do your background with either paint or pencil. So that's black acrylic paint. And let's say you wanted a black background. So you said you're going to color it in with pencil. So here's a black pencil. So let's just say you got a nice, solid, black background with pencil. Now i got to make sure that's dry before I get in here with pencil. Let me dry that. <clears throat> So here we have acrylic paint and pencil. So if this was your background, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put hard pressure with the white. This is hard pressure with a white pencil. And you can get it a little gray. Now I'm going to make sure you, if you ever do that, make sure you clean off the tip of your white. Okay. I clean it off over here on a piece of uh, craft paper. Um, so you cannot go over the black with a white pencil to get any kind of effects. But if this is paint, I can just barely touch it and look at that. And if I want to color it, look, I can almost get that completely back to white. Or you can, you know, do auras or feathering or stars or whatever, just so you can see. Okay. So this is why I like this is why I like my craft paint. Don't like using acrylic in comic books because I do them on the couch. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I couldn't paint on uh, the couch either. <laughs> was, uh, but what you need to do is do the background at a table and then take it to the couch. <laughs> and then take it to the couch. <laughs> okay, so just to show you, you cannot go over. Look, I'm putting hard pressure and there's no way I'm going to get white on that black pencil. Okay, and I show that all the time because it's it really does uh, make a difference when you use paint. Okay, let's go back to my brushes. And every now and then, especially like if you're streaming and taking your time and you got air on and that lights, you want to clean your brushes out every now and then because, uh, you know, acrylic paint will gum up your brushes. And then I just have 
I have my little water thing right here. One side's dirty, one side's clean. I keep a paper towel right under it to clean off the brush to damp it off. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All right, so let's go back to, let's get back to the, first the bigger brush. And there's no water in this. This is just, and that's true if any, if you want a flat background with acrylic paint, don't put any water. You got to wet your brush so that the brush is flexible. But, uh, you know, tap out any excess water out of your brush before you uh, dip it in your acrylic paint if you just want a nice flat finish with your acrylic paint. Whoops, too much on there. Let's get some of these larger areas. And then go in here with the small brush. And if you take, if you pick up your paint, and you, I know that some of this, I just, I just talk out loud what I'm doing. So if I do something like twirl my brush, I want to tell you, I just twirled my brush. So you pick up, when you pick up your paint, I'll do it over here, but you do it in the paint. If you twirl your brush like that, you'll get you a nice point. You'll get it back to a point, see? So do that in the paint here, like just twirl it, and you'll get a nice point while you're picking up. <clears throat> so I'll just do a little, I'll just do this side. I won't do both sides, just so we can move on to something else. But I love, you know, almost all my um, um, Kirby Roseanne books, all my Myth Morphia, Morphia, all my Morphia books, they all have acrylic paint in them. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I did more acrylic paint in those books than any other book. It's just, it's, it is one of my favorite techniques. I love using acrylic paint and washes. If you don't have, you know, watercolor, then just water down some of your craft paint and use it just like you would watercolor, just washes of acrylic paint. Um, acrylic paint ha actually has a little more tooth to it than watercolor. I mean, watercolor will work, but the craft paint, as long as it's matte, it's got to be matte, not satin or gloss, gives you that tooth for your color pencils to work on top of. So I, I, I even one day, one Saturday, I did a stream and I went through the whole one of the whole, I don't know if it was Mythomorphia or Anamorphia and did acrylic paint washes on every single page. <laughs> For anyone. Um, oh, thank you, Pacola. Yeah, thank you. Pacola uh, put in there that I stream every Monday and Wednesday. 9 a.m. Although I do come on at 8.30 and do some chatting. We are a chat show. <laughs> You'll get chat here. <laughs> okay, so, all right, a little bit right back in here. And uh, when you have a lot of paint left over, that's why, that's why you need uh, some kind of an art journal, desk journal, some kind of composition book, something that if you if you like to do mixed media or any kind of art journaling, then you can use scrape up that paint and throw it in one of your other journals for a later project. So you're always like recycling it all or repurposing, I should say. Okay. A little bit down in here. I'll keep trying to look up and see if there's any uh, questions. Remember, put them in caps. So anybody else want to talk about what they're working on or any other streams that y'all have been <clears throat> enjoying? Uh, I don't mind if y'all share each other's shows and stuff like that. You're, you're, you can. Uh, we, we're big on promoting other streamers and other artists and YouTubers. So if there's somebody that you is new to you, if you just found some new streamer you want to talk about or share, then feel free. 
Uh, Janet will be streaming at one and she will be doing um, a stamp carving today. Hey, Ian. Um, Julie says, my leftover paint journal is about half full. Once it's full, it becomes an art journal. There you go. Julie, are you still arting every single day? You should be up to what, 700 and something? 800, well, how many, how many days have you arted in a row every single day? Jersey Crafter is so great that you stream money. It's a great way to start. Oh, thank you, Jersey. Thank you so much. Sean on Folly Settled back to stream regularly on Saturday and Sunday. So there's uh, Shauna's times there in the chat. She's Yeah, she moved. She moved uh, to be closer to her kids, right, Shauna? How many days are you up to now, Julie Topaz? Mm -mm. Let's see if she puts in a number. Put me in a number, girl. <laughs> So maybe she doesn't know herself. It's been so many. She's like, oh, I, gotta, I gotta go look that up. I'm not sure how many days. <laughs> oh, so nice, isn't it, Shauna? Today will be day 966. So Julie Topaz, who is teaching herself how to draw and other things, uh, 966 days of doing something artistic, sketching, drawing. I'm just going to kind of find, fill in some of these little areas here. And you don't have to do it all right. Like, you know, when if you miss a spot, well, you know, you know where your black paint is. You know, just take the lid off and get your little paintbrush in there. <laughs> oh, okay. So you were in Texas for a temporary. Okay. I know you have to be back. Be glad to be back, Shauna. All right. Let's see. So some in here like right back in here All right now i usually try not to turn the page upside down right side up when i'm uh, on stream oh wait here's another little spot but i'm going to do that to get that little part up there at the top so there's a few more little holes here of course you can always go in here on these little tiny tiny areas with your black pencil you know if you're not going to do a lot of shading or anything on top of this black you can just go in these tiny little areas with your black pencil but i'm just kind of showing you this is how i would do it if i was just sitting here doing it that's how i did my poster one little section at a time one little bit at a time till you get it all done it's like eating an elephant one bite at a time <laughs> okay so let's turn this on over here i want to get over here in the top i just don't want to sit my hand on top of that it's probably dry by now but And I also, another thing I want to get back into with my uh, coloring and, of course, pet portraits, too, occasional that I do here on, on camera, is uh, pan pastels. So I want to get back to my pan pastels. I think my favorite, my favorite one that I've done, because, you know, they're new to me. The pan pastels are new to me. Because uh, I never like pastels because I don't like the feeling, that, that dry feeling. Um, but pan pastels are not like that. So um, when I started using pan pastels, I was just really so surprised that they weren't dry feeling. But I think one of my favorites that I did, uh, other than, you know, some color book pages, was Sammy's little, and I, I'm sorry, Sammy, I don't remember. She may have been gone already. Uh, I forget the name of her little her little puppy. Um, it's, it's not on the top of my head. But I love the way that one turned out. I mean, I like them all when I do them, while I'm working on them. I, you know, I like all of them. And I just occasionally pick one off of Instagram or something to do. Um, but I really like the way that one turned out. Chip. Chip. Yeah, Chip. Oh, let me see if I can find Chip on Instagram. And somebody else asked me about my uh, Instagram name. I'm and Twitter. I'm Inky Well, I N K I W E L L. But you can find me just Dee Dee Willingham. But uh, Inky Well with an I. 
on Twitter and Instagram. Let me go to my... Um, uh, see if I can find a little chip. It's not that far back. Oh, there's a little cat and one of, there's Melody's little puppy I did. I mean, I, I do pet portraits. I'm just like not really doing commissions right now. Um, I do the occasional one. Oh, oh there's, this one was uh, uh, Lynn's. This was Milo. I did like Milo too. I like Milo in the in the blanket. But I don't know. There's something about Chip. Well, where is Chip? Where is that little? Where's that little fella? It's not that far back. Can't be that far back. Where are you? There's melodies. Why can't I find? I know I, I had to post Chip on Instagram. I know I had to have. Where is he? Hang on, guys. There he is. <laughs> Just like little Chip. I don't know. I'm just so cute. Uh, okay, Scoops. Thank you. Thank you for stopping in. Um. Okay. I have a raggedy edge here. I didn't cut it very. I need to trim that edge there. When I took it out of the book. All right, so there we go. So that's one side of the background. Can you do this as more than one part and we can see more pencil work? Um, we'll see, Rebecca. I, I can say yes, but then I don't want to promise because if we just do so many things, it's hard to say that I'll, I'm not, if I did more than one part, it would no, be no more than two. That's why I always post the finished pictures. I try to do some different areas on the different pieces so you can at least see how it's done. But a piece like this, you know, could take, you know, I can't even guess how many hours. Hi, Sammy. Oh, you love it. I know. I saw you had it framed. Sammy had it framed. I do have, um, well, let me go over there and see if I can find it framed. Sammy had it framed. Um See if I can get to it here. But if y'all want to see a lot of my pet portraits and people portraits, um, they're all on Facebook in a pet album. A lot of them are on Instagram, but I have specific albums for people portraits, fan art, pet portraits, all different kinds of um, folders over on Facebook, and, and they're all public. So you don't have to follow me or me follow you to go over there and see them. I'm looking for you. Here she is. Here, here. Um, so here we go. So here's where she had it framed right there. See, it is white frame. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, just rest, Anastasia. Do you have a cold rag on the back of your neck? Put a cold rag on the back of your neck for that headache. And I know it sounds weird, but sometimes if you put a cold rag on your ears, on your ears, and see a cold rag is just a washcloth that's you know cold. I mean, I the kids anytime they'd have anything happen to them, they no matter what was if they were sick or had a boo boo or whatever, a cold rag. And I still to this day tease them about it. You know, uh, if Cameron has allergies, I'll say, well, how are your allergies? Do you need Nana to give you a cold rag? It's like an ongoing thing. Everybody knows that Nana has a cold rag at hand. <laughs> but seriously, put it on, put it on. Oh, just go, just look at Dee Dee Willingham, Jersey. If you go to Dee Dee Willingham, find me on Facebook and then go to the albums. Go to my albums and all my albums are public. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah. And then you can see all my different art. 
and also Instagram, guys. Now, there's more on Facebook probably than on Instagram because I've had Facebook longer. But um, you're welcome, guy, Linda. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So now we have that. Let me just hit it with the heat gun real quick just to make sure I don't smear anything here. Although it dries really quick. Same thing if you do watered down acrylic paint. Um, okay, so let me move the acrylic paint here. Let me get off some of it off my hands, and we're going to go into the watercolor. Just I like to show different things that you can do with you know different. Okay, so I think what I want, I really like the blue teal smoke or fog or mist. Where I see, I can see where I missed a couple more of the little black. Um, let me just get a. And do I want? No, I want to pass. Just get a. Let's just get a pen here. So there's a couple little places here where I missed. As soon as I look away and look back, it, it stands out. Okay. I think I've got... Oh, no, that's a flower. But okay. All right. So I'm going to... Um, yeah, I know. Right, great? And feet for nausea. Yeah, or you put them wrap it around your wrist or your ankle. I don't know. There's something about a cold rag, right? It's like the all all therapeutic healing with a cold rag. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to I'm going to use my Arteza, but you can just whatever. You know, I have my Jane Davenport's. I have my uh, uh, Gamzai Tambi ones. I'm just going to you know because I just got these, so I like to play with them and test them out. Um, <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and see what color teal I want to use. Do I want to use this one? Yeah, that's good. All right, so again, you have to water, whoops, you have to water it down. Water, water, very thin, very thin if you want to shade and, and see your pencil through it, right? Now on my big poster, I did uh, Copic base. I did everything, I, I colored that whole poster with Copics. Every bit of that poster is done with Copics first. And then I've gone over it with color pencil and I'm just, you know, got to continue until I finish the whole thing. Um, for some reason, I see myself doing this with Hunter Green Acrylic Barrier. You could do it with any color you want. Yeah. Uh, just as some colors, like I said, red, yellow, and lime green in particular, those are translucent just in and of themselves, regardless of the brand. And you might need two coats. Okay, so I got this really watered down here, and I'm going to get me a base. Okay, I just thought of something. I just remembered something about the water on this paper. This paper, for some reason, does not like too much, not too much water, but it models up. I just remembered that. I just now remembered that, guys. The Nick Filbert Serene book models like it doesn't lay down. Let me, I'll hold it up so you can see it. I'm still going to roll with it, but see if you can see. See how it's not, see how it's kind of model y looking? I totally forgot that this book does that. See how it's modeled up? I don't know if that's the right word, but it's like, um, Something about this particular paper, water, color, it doesn't do it with, um, it doesn't do it with water uh, acrylic. Because let me show you. Here. It doesn't do it with water color. Now, this is modeled in the sense that there's different layers, but I don't know if you can tell the difference. Okay, here we go. See how when I just put a layer of acrylic paint, how it's nice and flat? This is watered down acrylic paint. Okay. This is watercolor. I don't know if you can see, see how it like, I don't want to call it bunching up. What, what's a good way to say that? It just kind of pulls. It just doesn't lay flat. What's a good word for it? Mm, oops, sorry, guys. I mean, it's still, it's, I'm going to buckle. No, it's not buckling the paper. 
puddles. Well, puddles isn't really good uh, description because watercolor puddles in and of itself. It models. It um, no, it doesn't pucker or buckle. I'm not talking about the paper. The paper is not buckling at all. Not at all. It's not peeling because nothing's coming up. Yeah, the color's just uneven. Yeah, I guess that's just the best way to say it. The color is just uneven. Look at it here. This is acrylic paint. See how I can just get a nice flat wash there? Modeled is good. Yeah. See how it's just a nice flat with acrylic watered down acrylic? But it's not laying. It's modeling. And we're going to still go with it anyway. Yeah, it's resist. There you go, May. It resists the paint in some spots. But it doesn't do that with watered down acrylic. That's what's weird. And I totally forgot that it does that. I did know this because <laughs> we've done it before. Uh, I did I did know this because we've done it before. But uh, we're going to still go with it anyway. Okay. Because I'm going to put pencil on top. So let's just go with it. It just kind of wants to soak in differently but we're gonna roll with it no it's not leaving brush marks um yeah it's just soaking in different Okay, we're gonna still go because we're gonna we're gonna go over it anyway with pencil. This is just like a base coat. What is a little girl? I hear you down there. You want up here, don't you? Come on, you want to come up here for a minute? She brought me her toys. Oh my goodness! Come on up. You want to come up here? Let me just move the paint. Come on. Come on. You can come up here for a minute. There you go. All righty. Yeah. You want to just lay here and let mama pet you a minute? Okay. I know you're just purring away. No, nope, don't get, don't go over that. You can't go over by the paint. You have to stay on this side, baby. Got to stay on this. There you go. Lay down. Let me pet you. Pet with one hand, paint with the other. <laughs> oh, no. Just a sweetie. Just a sweetie. Got to walk and chew, chew, oh, chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. Yes, we can. I'll zoom in here too, guys, in a minute. May, you do a lot of coloring. What's your favorite color book? Do you have a favorite? We'll see your answer. <laughs> I just want some of this smoky bits to be this teal color, just like I used on the poster, because I really like the way that turned out. Now, again, another thing is when you go to shade with pencil, you have to. No two ways about it. There's no exception to this rule. <laughs> you have to make sure this is 100% dry before you start going in there with pencil or you'll just peel, I mean, literally peel up your paper. You have to make sure this is dry. Um, Clara Markova, Tenderful Enchantments. I, I want to get back to my Clara's, my all those hardback books. I got to get back to them. I miss them. You can throw so much water, yeah. Um, yeah, it, the water is, is it's not hurting this paper. It's not bothering this paper. What's happening, though, is this for, for some reason, Serene does not like watercolor. Do you know how watercolor, it's on Johanna? No. Um, I don't, Johanna Basford books are so tiny for me. 
when I use those books, I have to like, I'll do a, a color, like I'll do a background with acrylic paint. And then I have to use like gel pens or fine liners or something on Johanna Basford. They're so tiny. I rarely, I, I haven't colored in her books in years. I mean, I love her color, her designs. They're just so tiny. The designs are so tiny. Um, hi, Pat. I know, right, May? And I wish I would have remembered this. Next time I will. But like May said, Serena's uneven. So that's one of the few books you don't use watercolors. But it, what's so weird is a, a wash of acrylic paint works just fine. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, so, um, yeah, sorry, Gray. I just haven't colored in uh, that for years. But here's the thing, guys, and I tell this to everybody all the time. Every book is different. The paper is different. No matter what you're going to use, you need to use it. Go to the back or the front. Some, you know, find a test play, a page, a place to test. You need to test. Now, I didn't think I needed to test it because I've done so many pages in Serene, but I forgot. I forgot that watercolor is not a friend to Serene. Okay, so let's see here. So I'm just going to keep going here. Water, just very watered down, very watered, because you want to still see. You want to see the line art, see? You don't want to cover up the shading. Yeah, I know, right? I didn't, I because I've done, you know, 15 pages or something out of this book, I just forgot that watercolor doesn't work on it. And it's one of the, I think it's, if not the only one. Have you ever had any other book do that, May? That's true. Acrylic lays on top and watercolor soaks in. That's true, May. But I've never had any book that does that. Even a, a Create Space paper. I can do it. Okay, so let's just keep rolling here. Let's keep rolling. I'm going to go ahead and do the, even though I haven't done the background here, I'm still going to do the, uh, I'm still going to do the uh, smoke or the fog or the mist or whatever it is. Clouds. I want to see if May has any more books that she knows of. Yeah, that's true. It is. It's just different, even though late when it's watered down, right, Ian? I mean, this is still going to work, guys, because we're going to shade on top. It's just there's just going to be. It could even work toward your advantage if you want a modelly look. I just don't know a better word. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it will. It will work. It'll be fine. Did you see that the cat picture Sam did for me? Um, yes, it was. Um, well, I say I saw it, but I can't really. I don't know what she did it with or anything like that. I have to go find it again. But I did see it, Susan. I saw it. I think I saw it on your Facebook page. Scrolled through and saw it on your Facebook page. I'm not sure. But, you know, I, I do kind of try to hurry a little bit on the show so that I get as much done as I can. But when I when y'all are doing this by yourself, don't rush your, take your time, enjoy the process. I do not go this fast when I'm not on camera. I take my time. I take my time and enjoy it. I mean, not that I'm not enjoying it now, but you know what I mean. I don't, I don't rush. I don't rush through it. And I do keep looking over at chat. So if y'all talk to me, put it in caps. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks for all those thumbs up. Appreciate it. Um, this is probably some of the smoky, foggy bit, but I don't want it the same color. I might do it a different. Um, like I might have it fade into a different color. 
I don't know yet. So these like smoky bits almost like turn into like tendrils. They almost could look like uh, branches. And it's kind of the same way on the poster. They do kind of the same thing. Can't believe it's the end of the month already. Or close to it. Okay, this right here. A little more water. So you can look, I've only had to dip into the paint like one time. Because I want it real watered down. All right, just looking it over. Okay. Yeah, let me look up in here. Those are actual branches. I just don't know that there's anything up in there. It, it takes you a while to look at look it all over. All right, let's go ahead and dry this. I will incorporate like, all right, I'm, let me go ahead and do it right now. I'll incorporate this same color in other areas like these wings. Okay, so I'm just going to base coat these wings. I'm going to stay in camera here. Maybe I should zoom in a little more. Let's see here. Let's do a little zooming in. That's pretty good. <clears throat> Thank you, Pacola. So I'm just going to, you know, put a base on these wings here. It, you'd be surprised at how much faster you can get a page done if you base coat it. And that's true whether you do it with uh, watercolor, acrylic markers like Copics or whatever you know that, that whole poster like I said that whole poster is completely done with Copics first Copic base coated and then I've gone in um what is it little girl I hear you you just want mama's attention I know you're the sweetest one and then your brother she talks to me though she, she meows and kind of talks to you. He doesn't really talk that much. All right, that's way too thick. They've got to keep it thin because otherwise you'll cover up your color book lines. We'll do some shading here in a minute. So I got to kind of decide what colors. I know I'll have gold in it. And when I use the gold, I'll use my, um, probably my, uh, the fine tech. It says Cola Rio, C-O-L-I-R-O, -O, but it's, it's fine tech. So if you find this, and you can buy these individually too, on Amazon, Jet Pins, you, you know, different places. But it, they're, they'll be called Cola Rio or fine tech. They're made in Germany. These are the best gold. See how that gold looks right there? Get it open. Come on, open. That's the same way the gold will look when you put it down. Look at that. So we might put a little gold in here while we're at it. But I'm thinking blue, teal, gold. And I, I'm thinking I want some red in here. It's hard to see, tell yet, but like these big flowers here, I'm thinking red. Uh, Inca gold, you mean the paste stuff? The Inca gold paste? Um, I think I had some years ago. I don't have it anymore. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, it's kind of oily, right? You wouldn't want to put any, you wouldn't want to put any kind of oil on here that'll spread. 
Uh, but no, I had I had some. I used it on a like when I use a, what do you call it? A modeling, you know, spackle or anything like that. It's fine to use on that. I wouldn't use anything like that on a color book page. Not that you can't, but yeah, I haven't had it around for years. I don't think, do they even sell it anymore? Um, yes, uh, Super Chat does take a chunk. It does take a chunk. Um, you know, if anybody wants to super, you know, but it's still, it helps the channel. Um, so, yeah, Super Chat does take it. It takes more than uh, PayPal. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, I don't know, Judy. Uh, the ink of gold, but it came in, it didn't it come in something like these? Didn't it come in some kind of a jar like these? And you put it, I, I don't know, oh, for some reason. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay, so let's see. I think I'll go ahead and put some red on this flower and then I'll get in here with some gold too because I want some of these metal things to be based with gold. All right, let's see. Let's see what kind of red do I want. This right here. Let's get the blue out of my brush. I want to water it down. Let's see what that color is. Which that? See, and I'll just use whatever little space. That's too orange. I want this one. Uh, whatever little space I got. And maybe even need a little bit of brown. Oh, let's go with this. Nope. Let's go with this. I'm just mixing up different colors here, guys. That's too. That's too magenta. This one's just not quite red enough. It needs a little bit of. There we go. Maybe that's a color. Now let's water that down. Okay. Kind of a... I have lots of... I know you can't see. I'm so zoomed in, you can't see everything. It's either going to be the pit, picture or the paint. All right, so now I do know I want this big flower here. With fluffy petals. Kind of turns into almost like a in the water. I think I'm gonna have this be part of the thing, the flowery thing going around her neck. This kind of is part of all that. Maybe some of it anyway. This that thing coming down there. Um, do I want that part of the flower? I guess I do. All right. Okay, just a nice little base there. Hi, Shelly. Ashley. I'm sure I'm missing people. All right. Did I miss something? No, let me know if I missed something. Okay, so these leaves here, I'll wait on that. Um, I think I want to get in here with some more red, blue, and gold. Let me go in here with the gold for a minute. Let's see what color. Let me go ahead and water spritz this down to get it activated which one do i want to use probably this this i think that's my favorite one let it sit for just a second hi cat and paste 
All right, after I get, I'm going to do a little bit more base, and then we're going to go in here and start shading with pencil. Um, we can make this at least a two-parter, but I'm not going to make it more than two. Okay, so now what I want to do is like um, this stuff that's metal. Maybe her earrings and then this little wing thing back here. And you'll see how this beautifully shiny this uh, gold is. Now let's move over a little bit. There we go. I'm trying to, I'm so zoomed in. I'm trying to stay in camera. But I love me some serene. All right. Mm. All these little baubles, these little beads or berries or whatever they are, I want them to be gold. So. And this is how I work on any piece. I just kind of work all over. And if you do that, if you work all over and not just in one place, you'll get your colors all spread out. Like, you know, you'll have it. It'll be cohesive. Okay, these little, I want the these to be like gold cabochon type flowers. These right here, these kind. Not all of them, but just these kind that have kind of rose-shaped petals. Maybe I do want those ones. Okay, I think I do. I think I want all these flowers that have beads in the center. I think I want them all to be gold. Like they look like metal, metal um, do lollies <laughs> on the clothes. Uh, uh, and, you know, I always say I'm going to do color book catch-ups, you know, think pieces that I may not have finished. I'll do just recordings. And I've done a couple. It, it's I don't know. I, they're, they're okay. I just, it's not as fun when you got you guys aren't here to talk to. Just doing a recording. I mean, I've done a few, but <laughs> it's different when Hubster's with me and we do one together. But just sitting here and doing them by myself, it's you know, it's just not as fun. And it has to be fun for me. Not that I won't do a few here and there. Uh, like I said, if you know if someone really wants to see a certain page done, I can do a. I can call them color book catch ups, where I just go in and finish pages and stuff. But they're just not as fun. Just being honest. Yeah, I know, right, Jersey? It's just not the same. Okay, so some of these little flat, like that one, might be. I don't know about this big rose though, but some of this little background stuff back in here, that can be metal. These right here hanging in jewelry. But you can't get it too thick or you won't be able to see see the lines. There you go. You know, and you could do that with a gel pen too. Some of the little strings, you could use a, a you know a, a metallic gel pen when it's real tiny. You don't have to use a paintbrush. Let's see. These wings right in here. I think that might be blue, but this back in here again. I got to keep it, got to keep it kind of watered down. I'll get this gold on here, and then we'll go ahead and shade the teal bits. We'll shade all that uh, smoke. And I keep trying to stay in camera, guys, but I'm trying to keep the paint in here, too. And it, it, I'm so zoomed in, I just can't get both in here. Um, it's like one or the other. Okay, I want this to be metal. But I'll show you all again some of the pages that I did in this book. Uh, that, are, that are in the book. Okay, I want, I'm going back to the blue again because I want this to be teal back in here.
you just gotta really look because it's kind of hard. And here, let me show you how that gold, look at that gold, see? See what I mean about the fine tech? And that's that's wet or dry, it's gonna be that shiny right there. All right, back to the, need a little bit more water. Put some on my tray here, on the lid. If you wanted to. So those that are color bookers, what are y'all coloring in now? What are y'all working on in color books? Thank you, Eileen, Pamela. Where do you get this, this image? It's out of this book here, Serene. Um, I would look on um, Etsy. Look on Etsy to see who's selling it right now. That's where I bought my second copy uh, is on Etsy. I, it might have been Cool Crafts or it could have been um, the other one. What's the other one? What, June? Uh, okay, so let's see what everybody's working on. Nick and Tina, Fairies in Dreamland. Sammy's working on Nocturnes. I think I've only done one page in Nocturnes, Sammy. Um, Color Morphia, Painty Girl. Cynthia is working in Nocturnes as well. 70 East Books. Yeah, thank you, Sammy. Yeah, go on Etsy and look at 70 East Books or is it Cool Crafts? One of those two. Those are the only two I know that I would trust. I mean, not that I don't trust everybody, but, you know, uh, I, I know that they get it to you. Uh, now, it could take a while, especially if it comes from overseas, if it's coming from Korea or overseas. It could take you, a, it can take a month to get a book from overseas. Just saying. Loretta's been doing the Zodiac Girl images from um, Mystic Cart Mirrors. Yeah, I've got her other two, Loretta. The Mermaid one and the, um, I don't have that one. I don't have the Zodiac one. But, uh, out of this one right here, the fairy tale princess. I more did this one here. I, I did a little red riding hood. Um, made her a vampire. She was not a vampire, just FYI. She did not have fangs. <laughs> I, I turned her into a vampire. But um, yeah, so I did this one out of uh, the the fairy and uh, the fairy book one. And then out of the mermaid one, I did this one here. And gave her scales. She didn't have those scales. I put the scales on her body. Um, so those two. Let's see. And then Sandy was talking about Nocturne. I think I've only done one in Nocturne here. Let me see. I got them. No, I got two. Uh, one and a half. Okay, so my Nocturne. Where's the one with the... Uh, hmm. Where's my... Did I put it in the book? Where'd I put her? I have one done somewhere. Well, I'm not finding the page that I got done in Nocturne. Uh, anyway. Yeah. I'm working on a few pages. Bonnie is jo Johanna Rose, the water lily, and something else. I don't think I know that one, Bonnie. Um, you can, you can put color over the gold. You can't really blend, Jan. You, you can put, like, I can put some, like, uh, greeny gold color on top for shading, but you can't blend it. You're not going to be able to blend on top of that shine. The princess one I'm in. Oh, that's the one that, that's the one that you're working in, Loretta? The princess one? Okay, um, 
but you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot, you know, one layer of shading and you can also go back to uh, on top of anything you shade. If you want it uh, sparkly again, just put a light coat over it. I'm just trying to find everything. It's the one. Oh, the one you won from me. Oh, okay. So that's the princess one, Loretta. Yeah, I can't keep up a who's won books either. <laughs> I write them down, but they're not in my head. They're in my ledger. Um, Holly, I bought color books from D and they were so, but haven't colored. Why haven't you colored in any yet? Here's the thing. If you're afraid, if you're afraid of coloring in your books, and I'm just right over here, guys, in my watercolor right here. Um, just make a copy to practice if you're worried or scared uh, to work in a book. This Again, this could be done with gel pen right here, these little tiny bits. Um, make a copy to practice on till you get your color scheme down or, you know. Again, all these little tiny bits like this. This could be done with a gold gel pen, glitter pen. But I'm just kind of marking them in. <clears throat> or if you're like me, you want... To preserve the book itself in color page multiple times. Yeah, I just I don't do that. Um, I'll buy another book like Serene. I have two copies of Serene. I like coloring in the books. I mean, I'll tear them out, but I like coloring the original pages. I don't care if they're create space, cardstock, watercolor, whatever it is. I like coloring the actual pages. I rarely I mean, I've done it a couple times just to color one to give away or something, but I rarely make copies. Um, I have, you know, I've had a couple of digi downloadable kind that I've bought, like uh, Cur um, not Kirby, um, uh, what's his name, um, Bennett Klein. You know, you could buy PDFs. It's different if you buy a PDF. I just like coloring out of the original books. That's just me. Yeah, some of them are expensive, Loretta. They are. Uh, but again, practice. Um, hi, Faithful Mess. Faithful, I think you, you weren't here when I showed it, but um, you enabler you. I did flip through this, and I did buy a second one out of the four. I'm going to read both of these first, Faithful, um, Faithful Mess, and see, um, see if I like the two that I ordered. The other one should be here any minute. When my mail gets here, it's on the way. Mine are watercolor and oil piece. I was making a joke. Oh, sorry. I didn't get uh, Yeah. I don't see literally every single, <laughs> you know, I do miss uh, some of the chat. So sorry, Vonnie. I didn't know you were joking. All right. Let's go ahead and get some of this area where I know it's going to be metal. And again, look how shiny this is, guys. Look at that. Isn't that awesome gold? Some of these, some of these I might, eh, I think I want them gold. I'm just liking a lot of metal in this for some reason. I mean, I want those wings to be like blue, but and I'll have a few other touches of blue in here. Like, you know, let me clean my brush here. Like these little feather things. These little feathers, I'll have these feathers blue too. Because those feathers, you know. And I will paint the background of this. I just didn't want y'all to have to sit through two sides of all that black, painting all that black. Hi, Judy. I was there still doesn't like the millions of people in chat and faces. Oh, sorry, Faithful. Uh, I hate when people have ish computer issues. 
Been there, done that. Oh, here's another feather. And uh, I totally get it. <laughs> here's another blue feather. So you just got to kind of look around, take your time. Featherage right in here. Another feathers right here. Yes. Okay, let me go back to my red. I want this to be red. She'll have red lips. She's going to have blue eyes. And anything that's black, like your pupils, your eyelashes, eyebrows, anything that you want. Um, most color book pages, the ink is not <clears throat> real dark black. So you're going to want to go in there. I'll, I'll dry this a minute and do that here in a second, too. All right, let's go back to my gold here. I'll have some kind of jewel in the middle there. So this will just be gold here. I guess this is a horn. And then this is all going to be gold. I'll hold it up here again so you can see how shiny all this is. I'm going to want this to be metal. All right, let's see. Um, oh, these little cabochon things be gold, but I want those feathers. I want these to be blue. All right, back to some gold. Um, flowers that are on this branch. I see why I missed some black right in there. Okay. See, look guys, look how shiny that looks, how pretty. What's the most expensive book? Serene's right up there. Although, is it... Uh, Momo girl, no, is it Momo girl or uh, Gilly? Gilly. Um, with what are you, what are you what are you having? Uh, what are you using? What medium are you using, Elaine? Because it's going to depend on what you use for me to tell you on skin colors. What are you using to color with? I'm going to keep looking back at chat. Hang on. Prismacolor. Lots of light layers. <laughs> Lots of light layers. Now, I don't put as many layers in my color book pages as I do um, portraits. 
this is all going to be a gold little plot, a little um, piece of jewelry or something right there. It's got little designs on it. I don't want it to get too dark. I don't want to lose it. Because even this gold can be opaque enough to lose your uh, designs. Let's pick some of that up. All right. Okay, back in here. This is gold. Hi, Christine. We're working in a page from Serene, doing a lot of gold on here today. All right, let's do... I'm not sure about all this yet, so I'm not going to do because I'm not going to have time to do it all anyway. So um, I don't know if I want all because this is some branches in here, but I don't want them gold. Oh, here's another feather. Let's go back into the blue. There's another feather right here. Go, go, what is that one called? Ah. It was not cheap. Let me see if I can find it. Here, this one. This one was probably one of the most expensive. And a lot of it's shipping. Ask Melody if Melody <laughs> sends me a book. I see how much it costs in shipping. Um, but I love this book here. Here's one of the pages I did. I love this book. It's just getting back to it, you know. But even though there's quite a few layers, it's not as much layers on here as like I would do a portrait. Hi, Kathy. I know I'm missing people coming in. I'm not trying to ignore you. Karen Griffin. Um, okay, so let's see. Now, because of the water, remember, this is what I think I'm going to have to do acrylic wash on her face. Because remember, this is modeling up. I don't want her face modeled up with this watercolor, right? Have to consider that because I, I for completely forgot that this particular book does not like watercolor. All right, let's see. Let's take a minute. Let's take a minute and dry. And uh, let's look at it for a minute. It is, it is, shipping is crazy, faithful. But, you know, get you one of every, every few months. You, you know, color in them, though. Don't be afraid to color in them. All right, so I think... Um, I think I might do a wash of acrylic. So I want to show you how to do washes. I'm just going to kind of flatten this out on the edges because it does have a little bit. It's not buckling. It's just kind of curls when you um, go all the way to the edge like that. And I do need to trim this off here. Um, I want to do washes uh, on the whole thing, but the watercolor does not work on this paper. Um, could you cut? Yeah, the, the, here's a problem with copying this. Uh, you could take a picture of it and shrink it down, but it's big. This, this book is bigger than your eight and a half by 11. Uh, let me see. It's just bigger than. Um, so it is not look, about nine and a half by 13 and a half thereabouts. So it's just bigger than your standard copy paper. You know, I mean, you could go with, you know, 11 by 14 or, you know, you know you're going to have to cut your watercolor paper down. Or make sure, you know, it fits your printer. The thing about, um, here's one thing you have to keep in mind, and, you know, unless if you have, well, depending on what kind of printer you have and what kind of ink, always test it first. Uh, before you start go, diving into a full-on piece because your printer ink may run. 
So if you have a printer ink that runs, you don't want to use any wet medium on it. You don't want to use markers. Uh, you don't want to use watered down paint. You just want to use pencils. If your cop, if your, um, yeah, you could take it to your copy place. Yeah. Uh, but they use laser printer. I don't like the paper. I don't like laser. Pen. I don't know. That's just me. Well, we all have our preferences. I'm not going to diss on any of it. Hi, Gail. Um, yeah, I don't like to base coat anything. I've, I've done some tests, Gail, with watercolor, grounds, uh, gesso, clear gesso. I have a whole sheet where we tested all that stuff. I don't like to do all that. This is a color book. I'm doing it for fun. I don't want to have to clear gesso, watercolor base. If the if it's not going to take, I've never had, other than this particular book, I've never had a problem with watercolor or any kind of mediums on any kind of paper. I've used watercolor on Create Space paper, which is the thinnest stuff you can get, right? Um, and not had any issues. This paper, whatever from, you know, India, I don't know where he get his stuff printed at. But it's just different. It's just a different kind of paper. Um, but anyway, so yeah, you can do watercolor grounds and clear gesso. And we did tests with all that. It's way too much trouble for me. I just don't want to do all that with a color book. That's just me. You can do it if you want. But te again, test all that stuff because every paper is different. Um. Uh, I don't know, Karen. I don't do it. I, I use the originals. I'm just suggesting that if you do use your home printer, that you test it because your particular ink, mine's not too bad. I have an HP. It's not too bad. Um, uh, not an HP. Sorry, that's my one. Epson. I have an Epson with Epson ink, and it doesn't do so bad um, with, like, I can use markers. But you can, uh, it just depends. You know, I, I can't say what your ink will do. Everybody's ink is different. So, um, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and decide what I want to do with her face. Um, do I want to do it? I, I want to show you how I can do a wash on the face. So let's just go ahead and. I'm going to put some uh, watered-down acrylic paint. All right, let me get my little thing here. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of acrylic paint. I'll just start with a nice light. I'm going to, it's going to be even lighter because I'm going to water it down. Okay, and we'll do. let me do a little test here. Make sure. Let's test her neck. Too, too, not enough water. Yeah, see, it's not modeling up like the watercolor did and i don't know why this paper does that that's the only one <laughs> uh yeah the thing about fixative you're then you're not going to get anything to well i'm not going to tell y'all what to do and what not to do because every paper is different every supply is different i've tried to spray watercolors with fixative and it speckles um, it can change. This paper might really change if you sprayed it with a fixative. It may speckle your whole paper. Every paper is different with, and it depends on what you're using with it. So I can't really recommend any particular thing because as soon as I do, someone's going to say, oh, that, that ruined my page. Well, sorry, you know. Okay, so it is doing it a little bit with the water. Okay, so where I'm putting just almost just solid water, I can see where it's kind of modeling up. Where I have it solid, more solid acrylic, it's not doing it. So where there's just like a lot of water, it's wanting to model up on this paper. But if I add a little extra acrylic to it, it's not doing it so much. But we're going to put, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway, because we are going to put pencil over it. So it's okay. You know, it's going to be fine because I'm going to pencil over it anyway. But anyway, I, you know, I just, uh, that's why I always say my, sh my show is not a demo. I mean, it's a, just a demo of how I do it. It's not a class. 
because, you know, everything's different and I can't speak to every paper and every supply and every brand of watercolor and every marker and every, you know, I just can't do it. Right? Sorry, guys. Sorry. All right, so let's just uh, get a nice base of color, which I'm going to pencil over. I want to get to our eyes though, and show you how to do pupils. Um, I don't know what which other papers, Loretta. I'm sorry. What other papers give you more tooth? Y'all are throwing so many things out there. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep up with what you, your questions are on the different one, but I don't know which paper you're talking about, Loretta. What gives you more tooth? Certain papers, or you have one specific one in mind? <clears throat> I'm using a tiny brush. I don't need to be using this tiny brush, but it's what I had in my hand. Oh, the fixative on other types of paper. Yeah. See, I don't, the only time I even use fixative, and it's because I have to, is with pan pastels. Otherwise, I don't fixative anything. I varnish, I varnish my uh, collage and acrylic paints, but you can't put that varnish straight onto anything with water base. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are, you are something else. Okay, so there we go. I got a little base on there. All right, so now. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, Judy, what is uh what what about the channel? The the channel you're recommending? I'm sorry, I missed that too. Yeah, see, I don't like chalk pastels. I don't like anything chalky or dry. I just like I only use the only kind of pastel other than, you know, I'll sketch something out or something like that, but uh with a, a Conti crayon. But I don't like the dryness of pastels. But pan pastels are not dry. You know, pan pastels are not dry. Oh, I don't know, Judy. What does she do? I missed it. I'm sorry, Judy. What What does she do? Um, thanks, Kim. <laughs> Okay, so there's the gold. I love the gold. All right, I want to see. I see a couple more places I want some gold. Hang on, let's do. This right here. These little bands here. Sorry, guys, I try to keep up with chat, but I know I miss some while I'm looking away and arting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, but what what does she do, guys? I mean, what medium? Does she cut? Is it a color book? A color book channel? I'm sorry, I missed it. Oh, pain. Ooh, creepy babies. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. All right, so let's try this. Hi, Gary. Let's try this, and then we'll do a little pencil shading. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to take a little second here, and I'm going to go back to the book. I'll show you a couple things that we've done. Back to Serene, since we're zoomed in here. Um, oh, thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, let me flip through here to some of the pages. Here we go. Okay, so this one we got started. I'm going to show while they're close up. I'll show you some of the ones that we've started on here and some of the ones we finished. This one is pretty much finished except for the flower in her hair. I really like her eyes. So you see how black her eyebrows, her pupil, and her eyelashes are? It doesn't, it doesn't come that way. 
Hi, Anne. Those that that blackness in the pupils and eyelashes. Look, look, see how it's gray. Let me show you. Let me just flip back and forth here. <clears throat> See the pupils? See how that's not dark? It's not black. You have to do that yourself. And we're going to do that on her. So uh, let me pick a couple more out. This one's not done. But again, the eyes, see how the black, the eyebrows, the eyelashes, and the pupils? find a couple more here this one's still in progress but she's her eyes have been uh, uh blacked in her eyebrows have not there's a good example see how her eyebrows are kind of gray that's what her eyelashes look like and her pupil they were that same color as her eyebrow so you have to go in there and do them yourself you have to put makeup I put freckles on her because we made her a redhead. So added freckles. I really like this one. I love the colors in this one. And it's got the gold. See the gold there? Thanks, Jenny. And then this one... I've added stickles to her. So she's got like a aura of glitter around her. And then again, see I did her eyebrows purple and her eyes. So that's what we're going to go to here. So I usually use a, um, you know, a Sharpie pen, not a marker, but a Sharpie pen or a Faber-Castell. So we're going to go in here. Let me see. I could probably zoom in, but we're going to lose some clarity probably. Let's see. It's not too bad. You see how it's gray, though? Look at my black paint. See how it's not black it's kind of gray that's just the printing of the ink so we're going to go in here and let's go ahead and do her eyes so i'm going to do her pupils i'll just go ahead and do her eyes here now another thing that i always tell you to do that i always go ahead and do anyway and tell you not to do it is don't do the eyelashes or you know other until you got the skin done because if you go in there, you're going to have to go around all this and you can do it, but it's, you know, you usually have to go back and do it over again because you're trying to go around eyelashes and, uh, but I want to show you how to do it. And I'm, even though the skin's not done yet. Okay. So, and I also like to make her, their eyebrows a little more defined. I just like them a little more hairy. <laughs> Bye, Gary. And I like flicky, wispy edges to my eyelashes. Same thing for the bottom ones. Don't overdo them. Just keep them kind of light there. Okay, the inside of the nostril where it's the darkest. The lip, inside of the lip line and the lip corners, if they're already grayed in, maybe a little under here. But you got to find those, get those darks because otherwise you just don't, you just lose those darks. Same thing actually for the hair here on the sides. We could go in here and color that in. 
could use pencil too, and I might use some pencil as well. I'm just trying to show you where the blacks are, where they're really, really dark. See how it makes it stand out already? All right, so now let's go ahead and do her eyes. And now i got to get my pencils. I was going to use watercolor pencils with the watercolor, but, you know, because of the paper situation, we're just going to go ahead and go with Prismas. And uh, we'll use the watercolor pencils with the Arteza watercolors on something else. Um, all right, let's see here. So I'm going to want some greeny blue, some teal colors. I'm going to test which ones of these I want. Um, I might like both of them. A little bit white. Let's see. Let's test this one. And test. I want to see which color teal aquas that I want to use as some of these. All right. Let's see. Get my little pencil sharpeners. Thank you, Debbie. All right, let's go ahead, and I want this lightest. I'll tell you some of the names here if I can read them. Light. Uh, this is uh, Light Aqua. So I'm going to work in her eyes for a minute because we already started on them. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need a white Posca. Um, you can use a gel pen if you don't have a Posca. Use it for the highlights. Um, a little bit. I like a little bit of blue shadow. So I always, you can't see too much of it, but it actually comes up into the eyelashes, like the shadow on the whites of the eye. It's very subtle and the small, this is a tiny piece too compared to, you know, full on face. But it makes a difference when you add that blue. Can you see the blue line that I put under her eyelashes? It makes a difference. And then I'm going to go with the light aqua. And then white pencil. Let's see. Do I want one of these white pencils? <laughs> I got one in a thing. No, I got bigger white pencils. I just happened to grab that one. Find a white pencil. There we go. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to go on top of the aqua. Whoops. I'm going to go on top of the aqua with a white pencil. Why am I crumbling here? I didn't sharpen that very well. So you can see a little bit. Okay. Now it's getting like a little skin tone around the eyes. This is my, um, I have a couple of trays. This is all my skin, other than these are nubs. But all this is like skin tones and neutrals. I watched Mary use, I know I saw that. Um, I didn't comment on her video. I commented on Twitter because I'd already shut down the computer and everything. So, but I did comment to her on Twitter that she used all the stuff. I was so happy she had fun with it. I know, and wasn't it? If y'all missed it, Mary went uh, all the uh, $5, it was actually $7 worth of supplies that I bought her at Hobby Lobby. You know, when we, me and Hubster went whispering through Hobby Lobby, she used it on a video. Her, like, it's probably two videos back now, but it, she has it in the title. I used Dee Dee Supplies from Hobby Lobby or something like that. So she did use all those um, supplies that I sent her. It was so, she did so good. And she was trying to use that uh, wrist wrap. And uh, someone, and I was going, use it on a journal. And someone else in the chat's going, use it on a journal. <laughs> Because <laughs> Mary doesn't really wear jewelry. So, um, yeah. So, uh, no, faithful, these nubs, nubs do not get trashed. Don't ever even say that. How dare you say trash those nubs? Actually, my nubs go to Cameron. He has a ginormous peanut jar full of my of nubs. His, his nubs, my nubs. But, yeah, so you can put them in a pencil extender. 
And you can use this like for a while. <laughs> oh, she's still wearing the bracelet, Holly. Aw. So anyway, yeah, nubs go to Cameron in the nub jar. He has a nub jar. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, so this tray right here are my Prisma, not all of them, but they're a, mo a lot of my neutrals. And then I have another, um, this this one here is all the other colors of my Prisma color. And then I have extra bundles. I have extra bundles of Prisma colors like this that are sitting here at my build, my marker pencil build. And then um, for my last birthday, um, I bought myself another set. So I have another set. I probably I don't know how many sets of Prisma colors I have. <laughs> and I still have to go every now and then buy new black and whites because I go through those. Okay, so now we got a little bit there. Now I'm going to go back with my black and go back in here and add more pupil. Okay. Oh, I'm going to get some more. It's going to get a couple of skin tones here. Let's see. Oh, does that sound, that'll probably work. Oh, thanks, guys. I'm glad y'all. I hope y'all like the channel. I hope y'all. Well, y'all do. I know you like my channel. Thank you so much. And thanks for all the thumbs up and all the likes. And all right, so you see how I'm doing this now? I'm shading. I'm going to have to go kind of like around the eyelashes. Whereas if you do your shading first, you can go right, you can um, pin those uh, eyelashes on top of this. You don't have to try to go around it. But I kind of want to show you... Um, you know, some of the eyes and stuff. Shade here, shade. So you already can see. Can you already see how it's starting to come to life here? Anne's got, I think Anne, what, Anne, what did you, did you do another collage or a mixed media? I haven't gone to your last one or two videos. I think Anne did something else. She's been trying to do mixed media. All right, I don't want to spend too much time on the face right now because I want to do some of the blue. Like, that's what I told y'all I would do. But I want to get some of her eyes. So I can just keep going and going and going and going. But first, I'm going to stop here for a minute. Comment page, what about my first attempt in the um when when would you when did you do that, Anne? Did I see that? Did I see a picture of it or did I see you work on it? I don't remember your first abandon. Did you post it on let me look on Instagram? Did you post it on Instagram? Anne? Y'all have to remember I follow hundreds of people. I try my best to get to all y'all that come here. You know, my first priorities are y'all that come here. But I know I miss some. All right, let's see. Um, let me go to Instagram. Let me go over here and find... Uh, you liked and comment. Okay, well, let me go look. I, I'm, oh, I don't remember, Ann. Sorry. I have a minimum, guys, every morning when I wake up, a minimum of 50 people in my, I rang their bell, that had videos overnight. 50 a day. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I know your name's, is, what's your name, too? It, your name's different, too. It's, a, it's not a colorful life. What's your name on Instagram, Ann? No, uh, Curly T, I am not. 
what what's your um and what's your Instagram name again? It's not Anne. It's not a colorful life. Is it colorful life or a colorful life? <clears throat> Anne Bliss. See, I knew it was something different. <laughs> Anne Bliss. Okay. Oh, let's see. Did I comment on it? I probably liked it. Okay, Anne's, oh, Anne's Bliss. That's why it's not coming up. Anne's Bliss. Okay, here we go. Oh, yes. Okay. She did an underwater scene with the, okay, I remember it now, Anne. Yeah, that's Anne's first abandoned book uh, piece. It's not a hot mess. And this is, by the way, guys, a double page spread. So that line down, it is the, that's a, you know, ditch of the book. It looks good, Anne. There's Anne's name if y'all want to follow her on Instagram. There we go. It's a little bit. I get a little too close. <laughs> you did good. Okay. Let's see here. Let me go in here a little bit with the lip. I want my um, I want my uh, certain red. What's the name of it? Tuscan red. Well, I mean, Tuscan red's my favorite red to shade with. I don't get it. <laughs> and it looked awesome. Let me sharpen. I want to get into the blue here in a minute too, because I said I would. So we're going to make this, we'll make this one a two-parter. Now, I don't know if I'll get to it on Wednesday or not, because I have something else I want to do on Wednesday. So it may, it may be next Monday before, or I'll do a, I'll just do a recording. I'll just do a recording of a part two. It's not as fun without you guys here. But it's a way to get caught up. You know? Oh, question. How do you know where to put the shadow in the face? Um, well, in a color book, a lot of times there's a little bit of grayscale there for you. If you're doing a portrait, like when I do my commission portraits, you have to just look at the picture and, and see where the shading is. But a lot of times, like everything I just shaded there, it, there was already a little bit of grayscale there already. I missed something curly. What did Curly ask? I try to try to keep up with the chat, guys. And I always feel bad when I go back and scrub through my chat and see that I miss people. Because I can't go, oh, I'm sorry I missed you. <laughs> you know? Uh, I think that one's a little bit alarming. I don't want it look like her mouth is open. Okay, I'm going to stop on the lips because otherwise I'll be piddling here all day. Yeah, you have to, Sarah, all I can say is like just do a lot of looking at pit people's faces. Like here, let me go here. Let me show you. Uh, uh, let me go to my Google Images. Um Okay, so here's a face that just came up. Okay, Google Images. All right, so if you go and just look at faces, let me just zoom in on her. 
look, just look at her for a minute, study it, look where the shadows are. Like she's just kind of getting hit straight on with the light. But if you're just doing a full on frontal face and you're coloring in a color book. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Jersey. I do my best. Yeah, we, you know, we can get over 200 people at times and I do try to keep up with the chat. Okay, so look where the shadows are on her. Just like break it down. See, here's the thing. Most people don't want to do this. They don't want to have to look at things and figure they just They don't want to practice. They don't want to study. Okay, so she's got her light just kind of hitting her straight in the face. Let's look at her nose. All right, so let's look at her nose. It's not wanting to stay zoomed in on me for me. There we go. All right. There. So look where the shadows are on her nose. See how she has like a little ball of light on the tip? See how has a little ball of light on the tip? I mean, just, just look at it for a minute and you can see. So if you look at, you know, if you're not sure you got a, you got a straight on face. Now she's kind of looking up, right? Her, see, she, you're looking at under her nose. Um, let me see if I can even find something a little better. Faces tilt up. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find something kind of straight on. Um, and then slightly. See, and you get all these different things. Like I put in faces tilt up, then I can select women, low angle, you know, you can do all, look, slightly tilted up. So here's one, this one's, she's in real heavy shadow here. But look at, see how the shadows are? I don't know. I don't know if anybody's paying attention to that. Okay, so let's. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to see if do I want this. I kind of like that color. This and maybe the lighter one. That's not going to be light enough. I need. No, I might just have to go with white. Okay, I'm going to just go with these two colors. I'm going to go with white in this for these uh, smoky bits here. Where I find that? Uh, on Google. Google Images, do y'all not know, okay, let me, maybe, I don't know, maybe I just assume that people know things. Okay, go to Google, okay, go to Google, here, let me just go to straight on Google, hang on, um, hang on, and you can go to Pinterest too, but, okay, so here's Google, okay, so we want to go to, um, there's the search line, so I'm going to put in faces let's just put in faces all right so i'm going to search now on google here you've got all images videos news maps shop so i'm going to go to images all right now it's already bringing up all kinds of faces right i didn't specify men's women or anything now you go up here and you can select women, drawing, beautiful, and see all these colors up here? You can select colors. So you can pick different things. And it's the same thing in Pinterest. Yeah, it's the same thing on Pinterest. You can do the same thing. You know, here's different products. Here's, let's, let's go to women. And then there's old. Natural, side, portrait, sad, makeup, interesting, famous, reference, animated, round, monochromatic, sunglasses, agony, child, profile, any of those. You just slide through. And the same thing for up here for colors. You can select colors. And then, you know, just look at them. And same thing for Pinterest. You can do the same, same kind of searches on Pinterest. That's how you can find reference. So, like, let's just say we wanted to draw, wanted to draw a turtle. Oh, and let me show you another thing, too. 
All right, so you go to the turtle. All right, you go to images. Usually shopping comes up first. Uh, go to images. And then when you find a turtle you like, let, let's just say you like this one that's kind of underwater, maybe this one. When you click that one, you're going to get lots more that are similar. So if you want an underwater turtle, once you click on that one, you can go down and you're going to see other ones that are similar. Okay. Um, or if you just want like, here's one, uh, here's like a box turtle type. So when you click on that one, now you've got all these images that are similar to that one. You see, does that make sense? You're still, <laughs> Linda, I'm shopping for a turtle. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> so anyway, then when you get here, now I got turtle in here. Look, there's cartoon, cute, sea turtle, drawing, baby, pet, animated, dragon, Clip art, box turtle, beach turtle, green turtle, tortoise, transparent, ocean, wallpaper, red and red eared slider, island, small, adorable. Let's click on adorable. Here you go, Linda. <laughs> so here's some adorable ones. And then when you click on, you know, these little baby turtles, then you'll get a whole page of baby turtles. <laughs> But anyway, so if you want to draw a turtle, you can find thousands of, of references, right? And you can do the same thing on Pinterest. Uh, I just like Google because it's got a lot. It's got, um, it's not necessarily things people have, have um, posted to Pinterest, you know? It's more, it's more than just what's on Pinterest. It's like everything is on Google. <laughs> Y'all are going to buy some baby turtles now? Okay. So I'm going to use these two colors. Let me sharpen them. <laughs> we got to get crack a lack We've been here all three and a half hours, guys. Okay. <laughs> a plastic turtle. Oh, that would come up too. Oh, my gosh. All right. So let's just do a little of this smoke here before we go. And then I'll save, I'll save this, guys, for a later. Okay. So look. See the lines already there? So if you have a, anything that has any kind of grayscale, see, that's why you don't want to cover that up. You don't want to cover up all those lines. You could just flat color this and it would look like this black. Well, you don't want to cover up all those lines if you want to follow a shadow. <laughs> so the first thing I'll do is find all those shadows that are already there. Okay. Now I'm not bearing down. I'm doing it lightly. So let's find some of those shadows first. And you want to even do it lighter if you're doing face on the faces. You want to take, you really want to take your time on faces. And I'm going to show you my big poster again, my Nick Filbert poster that I'm working on, so you can see more detail that's been colored. So I'll show you that here in just a second. So I'm going to go around these little jewels down in here. I hope y'all can see. I'm, I'm zoomed in quite close, but. So I'm going to go in here with all that and just, you know, just do one little section at a time. Um, it's easier, at least when you start. So you figure out what you're going to do so you can make it consistent everywhere. If you, it'll, you'll have your page be more consistent if you did like all the blue shadows. Just go ahead and do all the blue shadows at the same time so you can keep it all consistent. All right, so I'm just going to kind of get in here first. And this is if you have some kind of line work to work with. And nothing's in caps. I guess y'all, if y'all remember, if y'all want to say or just talk to me, put it in caps and I'll see it easier. 
So I'm gonna go through the whole some gold things. These are going to be some gold things in there. Okay. I'll stop here. At, I won't finish this whole thing. I just want to do a section. All right. So now I've got a start here. So I've got my dark. Now I could still go in there with maybe a little bit of black and some of the tiny little crevices to like make it pop because I'm all about contrast. I love contrast. All right, so now I'm going to show you the difference between just that first layer of blue. Here's with nothing. There's just flat. And then here's with that first layer of blue. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to find, I don't want to lose my brightest whites, lights. So I'm going to go in here and find highlight. Because if you put, remember what I showed you at the beginning, uh, this right here, you can't get, you can't get white over the top of pencil. This is on top of acrylic paint. So if I go in here and start putting a lot of color pencil, I can still light. If I do, if I'm careful to be light handed, I can get back on here with some white. But it's not, you're not going to get it 100% back white if you try to get it back on top of um, pencil this is on top remember this is on top of watercolor right okay so now I've got pretty much my darkest darks in my light although I can still get a little lighter I'm going to show you that too okay so now let's look this is what we got so far this is what we started with. Here's where we are now. Now, I didn't go all the way down here at the bottom, and I didn't really do over there on that edge. I'm just kind of concentrating right in here. All right. Now, I can take my, and this is just using two colors. You can always, you know, get another, other colors and everything. I'm just trying to keep it as simplified as I can. So, now I can go in here and start doing a little bit more shading. Kind of smoothing out and blending, you know, maybe making some more like wispy or smoky areas. And then I can go back over that with the white and it'll be a lighter blue. But those areas that I put the white on is white first are going to be brighter. But I can still go in here with the white now on top of the blue and kind of make it a little more smoky like and take your time I'm really rushing through this guys all right then if I want to get a couple two more things and then I want to show you my big poster again let me get black where's my black I have one here all right so now I can get in here and just a couple little, little crevices. And some of those little tiny points and sharpen those out. Those little shadows, just a couple.
I hope y'all can see. Thanks guys for all the thumbs up and hanging with me on Monday. Okay, so a little bit of that. Now let's show you what we've got so far. So now we have this from that. There's Hubster Home for Lunch. Okay, so now we've gone from to this. Now you can go back over the black and you might want to smooth out, you know, a couple areas might look a little harsh and you might want to kind of blend those out to make sure you're, it's not too harsh. And I'm going to show you one more thing. Hey honey, I'm almost done streaming. I don't know if you heard me. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of soften out some of the black. And again, I didn't go all the way down here. All right, so now the last thing I want to show you, this will make it really pop. Just get a little extra oomph, okay? So I'm going to go in here with my Posca. And you got to kind of touch and kind of tap. Touch and kind of tap. You know, th there might be occasions like, for instance, in her eyes. I'll do that in a minute. There may be occasions in the eyes where you're going to want a harsh dot or line, but most of the time you're going to want to soften it. So you just kind of tap it. And you just got to kind of let it do what it's going to do. And you can do this and still go over it with a color. So I could put this Posca down like this with white. And if it looks too white, I can, as soon as it dries, I can go back over this with pencil again. So you don't have to leave it white. In this case, I kind of want it that way because I want it kind of smoky looking. Okay. Bye, Linda. So see how that Posca made it a little smokier? <laughs> so this is what we started with, with the base. Okay, there's just a base of watercolor. And then here's what we've done to it. See, we didn't go all the way down here. You can see where we kind of left off right there. Yes, she is dot. She streams at one. She's going to uh, do uh, stamp carving today. Yeah. Bye, Sammy. Okay. And then if you want, now I don't know if I'm going to want this or not. If I don't like this, I'm going to paint over it. But if you want, you can also, because this is paint, you can make a soft aura or more extra smoke. On the paint, on the paint. And the reason that works is because of the acrylic paint. Curly, um, I don't know if she's still here, but one of the girls will put in her link. Okay. So now we've gone from this to this. All right. Now let me quickly do her... Let me give her a little, I'm going to put just a little bit of a highlight on the bottom of her eye, which I will go back over with teal. I'm going to go back over the dot in the eye. And I always like to add a little extra highlights of my own. Yeah, it has to be matte paint, um, Loretta. 
All right, let me hit that with a heat gun because I don't want to. I don't want to touch that Posca while it's wet. And again, we haven't done anything around her skin or anything. I just like, she's just got a base coat on and just a slight bit of shadow around her eyes, which isn't even hard on anything. Let me get a sienna color here. Terracotta. So I grabbed the, I grabbed one that's broken. Um, and we can start, you can do more, obviously do much more shading and color in the eye. We, you know, we didn't get to any of this. I will, um, I'll save this for another day. Probably won't be this Wednesday because I have other things I want to do this Wednesday on our show. But I'll just do a little bit here just so you can kind of see that other colors are going to make the eyes really pop out well not you know they're gonna make them stand out <laughs> so there's a start oh that's all right louise go ahead that's okay the reason that you, if you have a base coat of acrylic or watercolor or marker is because you can just get so much more layers and and uh, shading done and things that you can't shade things that you can't shade um, pencil on pencil like this white pencil on black white pencil on paint pencil on pencil pencil on paint um, I just use some uh, acrylic paints I just use acrylic paints for the for her face, and the re only reason I did that is because I had forgotten. If you weren't here earlier, um, watercolor doesn't work well on serene. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, so let me quickly. I think I'm backed out as far as I can. Uh, oh wait, back out here. I want to back out as far as I can, and let me level up my camera a little here. I'll show you the poster that I'm working on. by um nick filbert that's his that's his real name there but if you look him up he goes by nick filbert okay so this is th now this one i started with copics and alcohol markers as a base and then shaded with pencil but so the whole thing first started with copics as a base and then you can see where I started shading here, the smoky bits. So, and this is huge, guys. Look at my hand. This is a full-on huge poster. And I do have this little bit down here finished. So you can see right down in here. This, this is done. This is done. This. And I'm starting, I'm working up onto their skin now. And uh, it was a little tricky because they're quite intertwined <laughs> and trying to decide, was well, that his foot or is that her foot? <laughs> that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so there's their faces. I'm still working on their skin and all their headdresses and everything. But you can see how it's coming along on this, this corner over here. But it's, let me tell you, let me, oh, Eileen, did you see what Janet made me buy? I don't know if you were here earlier. Look, Eileen, I got a new metal, a metal yardstick. <laughs> okay, so this poster is approximately 24 and a half tall by 34 wide. It's huge, guys. It's huge. Oh, but anyway, but yeah, I started by doing all the Copics. So like right here, you can see there's, this is just colored in here with the uh, marker. There's no shading done here yet. See the purple there? That's just, uh, that's just the Copics there. <laughs> and it does flash out depending on which light. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six lights, seven lights. So depending on which light is hitting it, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> but anyway, so this is the Nick poster that I am working on. 
slips this way, this way. And uh, you can, I imagine you can still get it on, uh, you know, Etsy. So, yeah. Um, Let's Color Love. It's a poster. And again, he goes by Nick Filbert, but there's his full name. I don't know if there's an ISBN. Yeah, here it is, but it's really tiny. Just look it up on uh, Etsy. Go to uh, uh, the two color book sites that we mentioned earlier on Etsy that do, uh, that do um, Asian, Korean, Chinese. And they come from Korea. So it's going to take, it'll take a month to get it. So just be patient if you order it from Cool Craft or 70 East. It's going to take a month to, you know, five weeks to get something from Korea. So um, just saying, you know, be patient with June. All right. So um, June being the person, not the month. <laughs> All right, guys. We all got any more questions or anything? Are we, are we kind of done? I mean, I'm done with uh, for today. Um, I don't want to work on it anymore until we get back together. But look at the gold on that, guys. Look at that gold. And you can see the difference. Look at the black background and just that little bit of shading that we did. So the same thing will be done with, you know, I, I want to do all the big things first. The red, the blue, and the gold. And then little tiny things can be accent colors. The accent colors could be, you know, a couple other smaller colors, but the main colors are going to be these colors right here. And if somebody wants to put Janet's um, link in there, feel free, or you can just look up. She's here. She's a mod. If you want to click on her name uh, if, and guys, if you want to follow anybody, just go to the three dots at the end of the person's name. And if you click on there, it'll say, go to channel. And you can always go to other people's channels while you don't lose this one, at least on your, on your, you know, PC or lap, you know, your laptop. I don't know about the phone and the iPad. I don't ever try to go to somebody else's channel when I'm on those two. So yeah, but anyway, Janet's going to carve stamps today. So I will leave it at this. You can see a little bit of work on that one eye. So you can see where we're heading a little bit. And uh, it does work on the iPhone too, Debbie. Thank you. You're welcome, guys, and thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for all the thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up out the when you're heading out the door. <laughs> all right, guys, we'll see you at Janet's. And um, remember, I stream on Wednesday, same time, same channel. Okay, guys, bye.